<laughs> what's up what's up what's up we are back i'm sean and i'm corey and this is no labels necessary episode number six. Six? Six. <laughs> six 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 okay okay six 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 no labels episode number six for y'all who are new to us not true to us yet we are the two co-founders of contra brand agency we got a music marketing agency we help artists grow all that good stuff but here we're just trying to talk music have fun of course and talk marketing because that's what we love to do so hopefully y'all enjoy in today's episode we're gonna be starting with something a little a little wild in okay. terms of the topic okay yeah, in terms of the topic i want I want to come right out the gate with it. But then we have some strong, strong advice for y'all. Some real gems for y'all who are working on y'all marketing campaigns. But first, we got to get to the to the wild stuff. Ignore this random clip on the screen. That was from our test <laughs> that we had to do. <laughs> Kevin Hart, you know, pretty funny guy if you ain't heard of him. But this is the one that I wanted to go over right here. Oh. It's the Say Cheese post. All right, somebody posted the Mac. Shout out to the Mac just at Aaron M. Says Glorilla, the first female unisex rapper, LOL. Her shit be sliding in the whip. All right. And of course, the question is, is this true? Tis this true? And by unisex, by the way, for y'all who can't figure it out, he's basically saying, yes, yeah, a female rapper who can be listened to by dudes, right? You know, dudes don't really give give women the credit they deserve a lot of times yeah, that's musically. True. That's, that's you know, sadly true. The guys don't quite feel comfortable, you know, bumping the, the whip yeah. and, and having the music on and then somebody else slide up at the light. You go, ooh, let me turn that hole down just a little, just a little bit. No, I think I right? turn it up. You know, hey, turn it up. Hey. Attract the right crowd, bro. Hey, I like that, right? <laughs> Attract the right crowd. <laughs> Attract the right crowd. You turn that thing up and you look him dead in the eye. <laughs> like, if, if it's a dude, you be like, what, bro? What you going to do? <laughs> like, this ain't for you anyway, bro. You ain't about to be over here. This ain't for you, man. That's how you intimidate them, bro. You, if, you, if you own it. <laughs> <laughs> or y'all bond. And they're like. Or you bond. That shit fire, right, bro? Hey. You like. Yeah, that shit is fine. Right. <laughs> that shit is fine. <laughs> Before we even get into the answer of this, because that's bro, it's so true. I remember the summer, <laughs> not when it came out. But when it blew up, because it took a year to blow up, boot up. Oh, yeah. Bro, that junk was everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> and me and my god brother, we went to Myrtle Beach on um, a trip, a biker week. You know about biker week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were up there. It's a there. wild trip. Hey. <laughs> so- Hey man, just two dudes too. Like it wasn't even like some big plan stuff. It's just like, hey bro, we going. That's that's a few <laughs> enough people where you can really be agile and get into shit. Yeah, bro, and and get out of it too. <laughs> <laughs> so we, <laughs> that junk was bumping everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And I remember these bikers do you these biker dudes using that song to pull women, man. Like they would just yeah. they would just be you know pull. You know, post it up, playing it, and every time a woman pass by, oh yeah, that's my <laughs> shit, boot up, we'll start dancing with them. Anytime a song can do that, for one, like you said, like you said, the right crowd, you're like, hey, that's why you turn it up. Yeah, bro, exactly. Yeah. I, know, I know who the target audience is when you throw that shit on. You know what I'm hey. saying? You know who you trying to hey. trying to bring to your side. Hey, bro, these these are the vibes. <laughs> it's like, hey, dog, I don't want you around right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes that shit just hit, brother. You remember when Meg first started popping? Bro, it was hard being a Meg Stallion fan as a guy. Like it was tough, bro. Yes, it was tough. Yes. <laughs> See, and I look. Like, I remember because actually it was before she blew up. I don't know if you ever saw that clip. So back when I was doing Adventure ATL heavy. I posted her freestyle, the Meg freestyle, as a part of our promo campaign, and that came out probably about eight months before she blew up or whatever. But the, but the shit was so hard, bro. Yeah. It's that one she's like in a neighborhood or whatever, yeah, and yeah. just freestyling, bro. That jump was so hard, and people were like, "Yo, who's this? Who's this? Who's this?" Because it was hard, right? But it's like I was able to get it under the guise of the brand at that time. People weren't associating with just me. Yeah. <laughs> but you know as you start to play play the music more as she start pop like you said it was it definitely became a thing and i don't think it's ever gotten to that point where you can play meg and people be comfortable with it to be honest like it's not the same type of comfort yeah people know that she's a big artist right yeah but it's not the same as bumping this glorilla shit niggas was singing wow <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> bro, a lot of me right now <laughs> said, niggas, a lot bro. of me right now said, oh, those lyrics ain't never left your lips. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. There, there isn't a guy listening to this podcast right now that can say that word. Those words never came out of mouth at least once. I don't know, man. And if you That's do say it, you lying, bro. And it's I okay because it's a safe space, bro. Like I'm not gonna judge. Like shit, bro. I don't know, bro. I don't. I might not. I might not have slid that one out, dog. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie to you. I, I, I definitely unplayed the song. Oh wait, no, I wasn't thinking of what. what I was gonna was, say, but I was, I was thinking, like, I don't know if I slid that one out, dog. That was a little. I was talking about, I, I was thinking about Savage. There we go. I was thinking about Savage. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you corrected that, bro. Cause I was I was trying not to go too hard on you, but I was like, bro, like what? This wet ass pussy, bro. It just don't it don't relate to me. That one was like first person. You you really can't <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was kinda OD with that. Savage, Savage is okay. what, I was, what okay. I was trying to think of, bro. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> that one I got you, bro. That that one I got you. And Beyonce got on and she was too, when I heard the remix, I was like, "Damn, bro, they wrote the hell out of Beyonce bro, verse what, on that bro? shit, bro." She had, her, her shit went hard. She had this one bar. What did she say? Uh, fuck, what's that line, bro? Something about uh, I can't even think of the line, bro. I just remember she had this one bar that I I felt like as a guy I wasn't supposed to be singing. I was like, "This shit fire." I'm gonna have to look it up. I was like, like "This shit crazy, bro." Look, look it up because I want I want to <laughs> I'm gonna add some, <laughs> some context. <laughs> but I am so glad that you retracted the WAP shit, bro. I was trying yeah. to. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, bro. That was tough. <laughs> but here's the thing. <laughs> Glorilla, literally, the moment I heard uh, FNF, I literally said, I think I said this on the last podcast. Like, literally, I was like, bro, this shit's a hit. Like, I was with my, my wife, bro. I was like, five seconds in, not five seconds, but like 30 seconds in, legit, though. I was like, bro, this shit's crazy. This is a hit. What song is this? Turned it up. And I was like, oh yeah, this is this is gonna be my new shit. So that song, yes, and then everything that I've heard thereafter, bruh, is is definitely on that tip where for whatever reason it cuts through. Dudes are are you know, they cool with it. And matter of fact, um what's his name? Not Shuggy Duggy now. Shuggy Duggy. <laughs> <laughs> Shuggy Duggy's old school. What is uh <laughs> Ah, the influencer Drake, and he did the dance. Sh- oh, um, sh- Shiggy, Shiggy, yeah. He had a post basically saying that, like, dudes, bro, like, we're the songs that I shouldn't be out here oh, singing yeah, FNF yeah. like this, yeah. like, like we're the we're the guy songs that can yeah. make me feel like this. So it's been a uh, like a, a a common topic and experience ever since it came out. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. It, it's very true and. It's interesting though, because if one you acknowledge, just saying this, this whole conversation acknowledges that women do have it harder when it comes to breaking through at the same level of pop, right? Yeah. You talk about the levels of pop, you got like a specific culture. We know white culture is the predominant culture considered pop culture. And then people break into like people get considered, oh, you're selling out or you now mainstream once you break out of your main culture, right? So then black hip hop culture specifically in this conversation is like the next barrier but then within that barrier a woman can be hot even commercially like visibly we know you you're it but musically like might not necessarily cross over to the male side because a woman can go pop you know obviously they go into pop female culture yeah but still not musically hit into pop male culture so it's interesting that that they do have it that hard away because guys don't really experience that side of it. Yeah, and I think it says a lot too though about the the power of the the female audience, right? Like having like a large woman fan base. Because I think that there are there are women rappers that can survive without having a male audience. Yeah, yeah. But there, are, I will argue, there aren't any male rappers that could survive without having like a female audience. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't it doesn't hit the same. I don't think you know. I think males can survive without. Uh, female artists like a large artists. person, like, but, but that you can't be on that level, no, without yeah. a female artist. But yeah. you can be niche. Like I'd argue somebody like like, a like Cardi. Shirt. Yeah, Cardi is he has a female audience, but it's still more predominantly male. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, right? like fair. anywhere that's in that's that fair. type of niche, yeah. right? But again, that's the, he's still not considered that that higher level of you know pop scale. Yeah, you can't be up. You can't be there. Yeah, hundred percent without a female audience, which is crazy. Right, it's like so they they have all the power to make anybody go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically. So, and it, which sucks about that though is that's why this is a conversation in the first place, right? You pull this back up. 
Yeah, I don't agree with that. First, that's why I said first female unisex rapper because you know we know that there's already males that go both ways in terms of the fan base. So yes, and yes, I don't agree with it either. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, I, I'm gonna let you go ahead and give your your take on those. Yeah, I'd agree with. I would say it was Nicki Minaj, bro. Nicki Minaj is probably at least. I am anti Nicki in that. I'm I'm so anti Nicki in that. So I want to hear what you guys say. I feel like. For our age range, Nicki Minaj was the first female rapper that made that made guys feel like it was cool to bump female rap. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say to that, bro. I say nah. Like, what Nicki songs are dudes seriously bumping? Monster. That's not a Nicki song. I mean, you're right. It's That's fair, but trick. that but that won a That's lot of us. Trick. That won a lot of us over. Highly respected, like <laughs> dudes respect her lyricism and know that she's actually a dope artist, yeah. w- well above many of the other female uh, MCs on that commercial scale in this era. Like yeah. she's a true like we know she she writes. We know she got the the juice and on Monster. Like like for real. I've I've listened to that thing back so many times, not just in the moment, but over the years, and it's still like bro, crazy, bro. Like damn. You killed that shit, bro. Yeah. Like you killed. This was your, this you, was your song. You, you got it right. <laughs> so that alone is there, right? Yeah. Undeniable to me. But if you look at her catalog, so I was just about to pull it up, man. Let me, let me. You got that bass, got super that. bass, hard, dude. Bro, come on, hard, super. Oh, wait, bro. I got it. Let me go. Let me go. Her Spotify, no. bro. What am I doing? It's, I'm not saying they're not good <laughs> songs, but they're not songs that are culturally accepted from the male side that we can bump this shit because it's so hard. It's just not. Like, so, so that's the thing. That's the, the thing that I felt like Cardi had. Now, to me, Nicki Minaj is better than Cardi B in terms of an artist, right? I don't think Cardi B even wants to be as good. And she doesn't even have the same aspiration to be truly seen as a rapper artist like Nicki does, yeah. right? But ironically, her first hit, was one of those songs that something that Nikki, in my opinion, never had that males bumped on a commercial level, not just oh some one of her B sides or something that's not as as popping that males felt comfortable bumping and like oh yeah her street record y'all don't y'all ain't know I'm not talking about that so don't give me your personal life story and what you relate to not you digging through the crates commercial scale success a song that males and females both bumped. Bodak Yellow was one of those songs. Yeah, that's right? true. That's true. Yeah. What song like that does Nicki have? Uh, commercial success. See, the commercial part is what makes it hard. I ain't that's what makes it hard. Because I was gonna say maybe Roman's Revenge. Yep. Not that's not there. That wasn't. I mean, it had Eminem on it. And it has to be solo too. That was another thing. No, this was her song. He was featured on it. I mean, just like just her solo. I mean, yeah. exactly. Okay. All right, all right. That we're makes right. even more. You're raising the difficult. bar. Hold on. Let me go. Let me go look at this pink print deluxe. Bro, I feel like <laughs> that was something, bro. I feel like I'm missing something. Pills and potions. How's it go, bro? You you fold. <laughs> you fold pills and potions, bro. <laughs> nah, I'm in. Been... <laughs> Bro, you didn't fuck with pills and potions, bro? That's crazy, bro. That's wild, bro. I'm learning so much about bro, you right now. <laughs> this is the thing. I don't not fuck with Nicki Minaj. It's not. It's just that specific criteria. It's just like when somebody has all these accolades. You won a championship. You were MVP, but you weren't finals MVP. Or you were finals MVP, but you weren't first team all defense. It's just another one of those small little notches, right? That specifically... Culturally accepted by males, and and that was not that was not uh anywhere near uh, one of Nicki Minaj's like most successful. Okay, songs, fair. Right? That, that was. I'm that talking was. about that level of impact, right? That's all I'm talking about. Anaconda, that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all I'm talking about. So it's, it's just an interesting, you know, splitting hairs argument when it comes to Nicki Minaj, right? Yeah. Now on the other side, though. Not Nikki to me, but you got Missy Elliott. Okay. Oh, actually, actually, yeah. Like, right. what's the argument there? Yeah, like, that's, that's so to fair. me to say that you that's, that's just to be outdated. Like, hers never had a one sided type vibe. It was kind of just like Missy was just Missy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that simple. 
Uh, who else? Is there anybody else? I, I think I saw somebody say some. Somebody uh, said Dej Dej Lo. Lo. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, Dej Lo. Did you feel like that about Dej Lo? Yeah, try I me. I feel like try me. That song definitely. Yeah, try was. me did. I don't remember too many of her other like bigger songs. Yeah, I'm not sure she had like at least I think two or three others. But try me was yeah. Try me definitely brought the world together. I agree. <laughs> when that song I agree. came out, that specific song. Now it's, <laughs> it's very interesting that Glorilla does have multiple songs. She probably has at least three that. Can go both ways at this point. At least two. At least two. She got uh, F and F and tomorrow. Yeah. And then you look well, at pro- problems. Is that the same song as tomorrow? That's not the same song. The problems. I'm bad with song names, man. You listen to her so, album. I'm so bad. Yeah, but I'm bro. I'm so bad with song names. It's the um nine nine problems or whatever problems. Oh, girl, nine 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 problems, but the biggest one is me. biggest one is me. Yeah, uh, that's tomorrow. I think. Yeah, that's, that's tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, okay. that's tomorrow. Yeah. I'm so bad with song names, man. So hey y'all know what y'all y'all go ahead and kill me whatever. Pop Fuck shit. It. Yeah. So I tomorrow, F and F. She got one more. She has one more. Looking good the hell I'll today. Just sent my nigga five attachments. Come Bruh. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, I, I, yeah, I mess with her so bad. But, um. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got her. We got Missy. Oh uh, yeah. Actually, I'm looking at Dave's Love shit, bro. Dave's Love also had me, you, and Hennessy, and that shit was a bop. But it had Lil Wayne on that, so we, you know, we're not counting features, man. Right, <laughs> right. Not counting features. And hey, there with Future. Oh, yeah, and I that, feel like yeah. she had the potential for a lot more of those, though. That it did, did go both ways. It's just I don't know the back end of her her career why things kind of chilled out because she didn't like achieve the trajectory that you thought she would she she would be on when she first hit. Yeah, yeah. But, no, she, I, but she definitely has it in her. I, I, I mess with Dej Lo heavy. Yeah, I feel like she felt like one of those situations where, like, I think she just didn't want to do it anymore. I mean, it could be, you know, That's what it always something. Like, but yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, I don't know what the back end, like I said, is. But it was never like a you fell off, people ain't fucking with you, like you dropping some whack shit type situation. Yeah. You know, if anything, it was like things cooled off and then by the time you dropped again for whatever, you know, it's just hard to catch the momentum or maybe you don't have support or labels. Or, yeah. But, like... Yeah, so it was. It's interesting. I've seen that. It seemed like that with a lot of girls. Though. It felt like that with Dreezy too. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't, you know, yeah. females we stand with y'all. Yeah. Part, know, like part of me also wants to argue Coyle Ray, but I don't. I don't feel like getting Coyle... in the comments. Go ahead, go <laughs> ahead and put your your raffle ballot in, my guy. Go ahead, bro. Because I'm looking at her her shit, bro. She had no more parties. Everybody was fucking with no more parties. Okay. She had, oh, but we're not counting features. But I was like, she had big power with Pusha T, Blick Blick with Nicki Minaj just fall. That's all I got so far. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she, it's arguable. Oh, fly shit. Her I new, think that's she, arguable. Yeah, she got a song she just dropped called Flash in September. That shit far. I think, yeah, I think she could sit in there. Now they, no more parties. That's, like, it's, it's not a lot the, of them. That's the highest yeah. level of, you know, pop that hit both. Yeah. Mm, I guess we just got a TBD with hers. Yeah, and, and I yeah, would still yeah, argue TBD. that before 2021, we could have said Matt Stallion, but I feel like 2021 up. She kinda, oh yeah, she leaned in. She, they know yeah, it. It's all yeah. purposeful. We, yeah. hey, bro, <laughs> we don't need these dudes. We going straight for the women. They yeah. the ones who pay anyway. The show's <laughs> gonna be safer and these this creep any. Nah, yeah, yeah. She don't need us. I feel it. <laughs> but hey, if, you know. But if WAP is something you want to ever, you know, re argue though, I, I, I sounded like WAP was fire, bro. It wasn't a hit for no reason. Hey, no one said it wasn't a hit. No one <laughs> said no it didn't go hard for what it is. I'm just saying I wasn't bumping that, bro. <laughs> Wait, did we say Cardi being up? Yeah. Well, I thought Cardi. We did say we Cardi. Did? Okay, yeah, sure. that, bro. Bodak Yellow, remember? Yeah, okay, yeah. We yeah, didn't mention right, right. any of her other stuff to be yeah. to be real. But uh, I like it like that went hard. That yeah. shit. Yeah. Nah, I don't believe that's the name of that song either. Like I said, I'm so bad with song names. Yeah, what, what's Cardi B's fan base called? I don't know. I don't know either, actually. The, that's what I said. <laughs> I was about to say the Kardashians. I don't know why that was the first thing that came to my head. Oh, I don't man. know what you call fan base, but I'm hey, in it, bro. bro. I'm there. And that's and that is the signal. It is time to move <laughs> <laughs> the fuck on. <laughs> Yo, so <laughs> we got some some really, really strong advice for y'all. Um, or useful advice, I should say. Corey, I'm gonna let you um give the details, but because you were, you know, talking to Kenny about it. But Kenny, shout out to Kenny. He's one of the marketers in our music marketer program. For y'all who do not know, we help marketers be like us. Y'all know we work with really dope people, 24K Golden, the major labels, all to all that great stuff and have our billboard number one. 
and we've learned a lot along the way and we are helping people do exactly what we've did. If you want a business as a marketer, helping artists blow up, we got you, you know, uh, we'll probably probably put the link in the bio if it's not there already or the description um, and artists as well and labels. We're working with them to build their own music marketer uh, infrastructure. If y'all want to work direct with us in that regard. And the reason I'm talking about that now is because this question came directly from one of those marketers who's building up his business and getting a lot of campaigns because of the game we're giving him. And here's the problem that he encountered. Corey, let him know. Yeah, man. So the conversation was around ad optimization. So he was talking about his Facebook ad setup. And what he was noticing is that, I don't know the exact number, so I'm just going to make them up a little bit. But he was seeing, let's say, 1,500 clicks in his Facebook ad manager. And when he would look at his toned in, and for those that don't know, toned in is a smart link. Uh, we teach people in the program to use smart links to track your music conversions. But he, he's looking at his, his toned in data, and he's realizing that the what Facebook is saying he's getting in terms of conversions and matching up. Facebook saying 1,500, toned in saying like 800, 700, something like that. So the advice I gave to him was like, yo, man, you need to optimize your ads based around what your smart link data is saying. Because what's what is a, a big issue on these different platforms and it's going to continue to be a big issue is bots right like every single social media platform has bots they all have bots to different uh degrees but they all got bots and there's nothing that you can do as a marketer or as an advertiser to get rid of it except look at the the places where bots can't go so one of the great things about toned in and feature fm and all those other smart links is that bots can't interact with that landing page or what's going on that side. All they can do is maybe click your Facebook ad and they get cut off at that point. So I'm telling him rather than going, hey, I spent $500 and I got 1,500 Facebook clicks, let me optimize based on what that data is saying. I'm like, hey, you should be looking at like, hey, I spent $500, I got 800 toned in conversions or smart link conversions and then continue to optimize your whole process from there. Because at that point, you're at least optimizing around people that took an action and, and actually made a move rather than basing your whole campaign, your analysis, your your new objectives off of what is more than likely going to include bot data if you're looking at the, the ad platform stuff. Right. So, because that's what we do. Like, we don't, now I, don't care, I don't give a what Facebook says or what TikTok ad manager says. I'm looking at the smart link. Oh, we spent 500. We got 700 clicks over here. Who cares that Facebook says we got 5,000 or something? They lying to me. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to convince me to spend some more money. Or, or, you know, they don't know how to get control of their, their bot issue. So, it's like, why even... Why even put myself in a, in a situation where I'm making my decisions off some shit they can't control <laughs> <laughs> or right. get together? Right. And you said Kenny was specifically doing um like Afrobeats for Afrobeats artists. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he works with a lot of Afrobeats artists. So he's running his ass to you know places like Nigeria, different parts of South Africa, West Africa, and stuff. And those locations are notorious for having a lot of bot traffic, right? Like so. Um, there are just like certain countries that like, that you know for a fact. If you hit them, you get a lot of bot traffic. Any lot, lot of places in Africa, Brazil, Mexico's on there, India, you know what I'm saying, Indonesia. Um, a lot of places that can be high quality markets depending on what your end goal is and what type of music you create. But the reality of it is that they all have a lot of bot traffic. And U.S. has a lot of bot traffic too. I know like for whatever reason, like Detroit. When you target Detroit, Detroit is a hot spot for a lot of bot traffic. I don't know why. I don't know who. <laughs> and Detroit is setting up bot servers, but it's a thing. You know what I'm I've seen it yeah. before. And so, yeah, it's something that I'm telling him, like, yo, you're going to have to be aware of that because the markets that you want to build these artists in are like hotbeds for bot traffic. So you especially shouldn't be looking at what Facebook and TikTok and right. man, YouTube in some degrees is telling you because, like I said, more than likely 40, I don't, I don't know, I don't know the exact numbers. I don't want to give a stat and, you know, not having anything to back it up. But, I mean, I would guess probably at least like 20 to 40% of the traffic is bot traffic at any given time um, on a normal basis. And then you hit those places probably creeping closer to like 50, 60%, you know what I'm saying, uh, just because of how this stuff works. So, it's like, yeah, bro, I'm not – we we teach our marketing team, like, look at it, of course, because you're going to have clients that care and want to know and they're excited about it. But we – as professionals are the ones that's supposed to know like, yo, that shit might not even matter because some of that data is probably a lot. Let's look at the data points where it can't be manipulated to that degree because like I said, bots can't, bots can click to the smart link, but they can't interact with the smart link. So, you right. know, everybody made it to that point doing something is at least a real person. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, yeah. at least, you can at least trust that data. Yeah. And it's funny, we were just talking about this and we'll, we're going to go deeper into this 
TikTok specific conversation, but you know, I was just reminding you of that time. Well, not that time, those times early on testing TikTok ads, we were literally getting thousands and thousands and thousands of bots That's when we were crazy. running ads. It was nothing like we've seen before. I'm talking about, well, we'll spend like twenty dollars and see like, like ten thousand clicks or some ten thousand clicks yeah. we we're like oh shit man this is what it's like to catch a platform early with the ads these numbers are crazy we're about to run it up but then you look those ten thousand clicks came through but on the the uh smart url literally no click throughs mm -hmm. so like no click throughs like we've been running it long enough it was like it's no way our targeting is that bad yeah exactly like, <laughs> like it's no way it's that bad so you know, they fixed it now. Obviously, like we actually are like running campaigns over with TikTok ads for some clients when it makes sense and all that stuff. But like at that point, it was arguably like a hundred percent bots clicking our ads, which was that shit was stupid. And you know, TikTok wasn't really giving us the help that we needed on what yeah. exactly was going on. Yeah, I think we stopped running TikTok ads for a long time because of that too. I, I think yeah, because yeah, that campaign was Taj, Taj Keaton's campaign. And then I don't. I think the very next TikTok campaign we ran might have been Nick D's where we used TikTok ads because he was only like our second ever TikTok ad client. Yeah. And so, and then from him on up, yeah, I don't think we got our trust back with TikTok ads completely until maybe around the Nick D time. So between that, that probably been about three, three, four months in between. No, nah, that was longer than that, bro. That was well, yeah, because Taj would have been the mm -hmm. fall before, and then Nick D was the spring of the next year. So it was probably yeah. like six, seven months in between, at yeah. least. Yeah, yeah, because you know how we would, you know, we'll test with people that are the client clients and test for ourselves and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was a good minute, and now I would say TikTok ads. Yes, we we have a higher trust, but at the same time. Just like, you know, you we started a conversation. You were talking about Facebook ads. Yeah. Right? It's any platform, hey, you still got to be mindful and pay attention to the numbers and see if it's real or not. Because not only do you have the hotbeds, okay, you can fix that ahead of time, get your targeting right. But then you also have just weird moments in time where mm -hmm. for whatever reason, whether the, the AI somehow finds one of those pockets of bots or maybe, I don't know, somebody's running some type of bot campaign or test themselves you never want to just assume that it's all real you got to pay attention to the data yeah bro. if you don't see the data making real actions don't trust it that's how i feel like I right said, like a thousand clicks don't mean anything if i don't see a thousand conversions or i mean well, that's not, i guess it's not fair i don't expect that but if i don't see a significant amount of conversions or streams or real people actions coming from the numbers I don't care what the platform is telling me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you get those those ad reps that be, oh, your campaign's going great. You know, you got ten thousand clicks for twenty dollars. You're like, yeah, but like only thirty people converted. Like, what's what's up with that? Like, are you telling me that nine thousand people thought this shit was trash? Like, is it is it that bad? Why did they click it? You know what I'm saying? Like, what? Why are you lying to me right now? What's no going way. on? <laughs> no way, no way in hell, bro. <laughs> and I mean, you know, it's interesting because you still have the bots that people run into when it comes to, you know, doing these campaigns with playlisters, they mm -hmm. have the bots they run into or shoot. That's usually more intentional for the content and stuff. Like when you post your own content yeah, and things, but running ads, it's crazy. And that's the part that's so painful to pay, right? Mm -hmm. Pound for pound <laughs> for bot after bot after bot after yeah. bot. <laughs> and that's like the one place that we we feel like we should be able to trust it. But yeah, the honest, the guy is true. It is not, you can't trust that completely either. So you always have to pay attention to your data because you might just have this one one-off campaign that's completely as bad as what we had, which was near 100% bots on a few campaigns. It's been a couple of years since that now. But at the end of the day, you just got to know that this is the game that we're playing. And as long as real actions are happening, you know, is it worth it? Because that's what you can judge. We still find effectiveness in ads. The difference is, let's just see, let's just say you did have bots and it was like 10% bots. Mm. If you increased your click-through rate that the platform says 10%, is that still a good click-through rate? That's how you got to look at it, right? Yeah. All right, so it's like if it still matches out and the results, the the plays, the streams, the ticket sales all match out to something that's feasible to you and is worth it, 
then it should be, you know, you're good. Yeah, it's like a, it's a necessary evil of the job, bro. It's like, you know, construction workers expecting like a rock to fall on their head. You know what I'm saying? Like you go into some <laughs> jobs, well, not expecting, but you know, being aware that it could happen. Hey, you know what I'm saying? That's what you wear the hat for, yeah, bro. Exactly. Put, on, put on your marketer hard hat. That's all you say. Exactly, bro. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen on every platform. So there's nothing you can do about it. But yeah, you have to look for the silver lining and all. Like, I mean, going back to that, you know, the, the early TikTok act situation, if we had. 10,000, those 10,000 bot clicks, but it was at least like a thousand real people converting out of it. I we probably should have ran it because that still would have been crazy. Like $20 for a thousand conversions would have been crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, or whatever we spent. So I'll look at campaigns like that. We'll still get campaigns like that sometimes. It's like you can tell us a lot of bot traffic, but we'll do our cost per click or our cost per conversion based on the SmartLink data. And then that still lines up with something that is worth it for us. We might be like, okay, Facebook is saying we're getting, I don't know, an eight cent cost per click. But then based on the toned in conversion, it's saying we're getting a, a 22 cent cost per click. I'm like, 22, I'm still pretty happy with 22 cents. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. well, I'm still down to keep that going. So we'll let exactly. them know, like, hey, keep it going. Like, let's keep running it. Exactly. So, like, that's that's really just the way to look at it. We know everybody does encounter those things. And if you want more information, by the way, on how to join our program, you have to apply, go through a call. It's not something we just let everybody in. But if you want more information in it, a good place to start is we have a video called How I Made My First Six Figures in the Music Industry. So you can check the description. Hey, watch that. See how we made the money that we made as music marketers, right? Or if you even if you're an artist and you want to see how we built infrastructure and got in the game, go ahead and check out that video. You can look at the title, but we'll also make sure we put that in the description. Check that out and see if you want to be in the program. It'll give you an, all the information you need at the end of the video. Other than that, though, we got some topics, some topics, some topics, two, which I'm very excited on. One, I got a lot of words for, but first we're going <laughs> to talk about Summer Walker. Oh, Ma'am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Summer Walker, you are constantly making me happy musically and everything you do, even though the, the not performing thing hurt for a second. Yeah, I was just about to say, bro, I was like, that thing, yeah. <laughs> that part hurt, you know, but that's just a blip. That's just a blip in a relationship. You know what I mean? Um, but Summer Walker and LVRN, I'm constantly fucking with the moves, you know. Um, and this one here is Summer Walker released a sped up album. So I don't know if y'all are familiar with Over It. Corey, I know, I know you're a fan as well. Love it. You know what I mean? And Over It went crazy. That was the one that really put her on the scene, mm. right? And just, what, Friday, I believe? I think she released it on Friday. She dropped a sped up version literally just that nothing special literally this is my music and i'm gonna re release the exact same project but sped up man imagine the work that goes into that or should i say imagine the not work yeah. that goes into that <laughs> as opposed to a regular project yeah so there's a couple of things about this as I'm, i think a good thing to do before we even get into it let's see what the streams look like so far if anything has popped up in terms of her streams um let's see if, if it's registering i know they didn't do a crazy rollout so it might not show on our top streams we should have went in the back end yeah, they dropped that shit quietly yeah they they did it real quiet yeah, it. we see yeah so it, it, it might be hard to hit her tops because that's just yeah her numbers really they crazy but we'll put it on the screen on the screen though so you can see it Last day of summer, sped up. Literally, that's it. Oh, it's called. That's funny. That's it. That's funny. right. Very simple work. <laughs> light work. Light work. <laughs> so, with that being said, now why is this important? This is just being savvy, paying attention to the the climate out here. Mm -hmm. Because what's popping on TikTok again and again and again? Sped up versions sped of songs. Version, just that's it. What was the? Um, I think I ride a bunny. I think I ride a bunny. I want to ride. I want to ride. Remember oh, that yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. was a? Uh, I don't even remember what song that was. Oh, it was a, a Jocelyn Hernandez song, and it was funny because I ain't like that had to be her biggest song, because you know she was on Love and Hip Hop. That's all I knew her for. And I was like, wait, what? She got a hit. Like, it was this song. I was like, I know this song. Oh, they sped it up. The regular version wasn't. So, and I know her team didn't do that. I wonder who did that, bro. I, I don't imagine that somebody on her team sped that up. Like, it was TikTok savvy like that. It probably was TikTok, bro. TikTok be making hits. They they, they do. Yeah. They do. But literally, that song took off, right? So, that was one of the biggest ones or early on, like, in the TikTok culture. Like, cut through the sped up culture on TikTok. Yeah. 
So if you see the culture literally just playing songs that's already, I mean, that are, that are already out, but sped up and that alone is taken off, then why not hop on the train? Because R&B is already slow, right? The, the fast-paced mm-hmm. music is harder to like speed it up and it hits as hard sometimes, right? Yeah. But R&B is already slow. I speed this thing up. Give me some more money, you know? Or, look, give me some more views. Give me some more awareness. Let me create a uh, an awareness campaign just off the fact that I did it, mm-hmm. right? And I was listening to that shit when I was working the other day. You know, I was good. Right? <laughs> I, I didn't need it. I just let that thing play. No skips. So, like, the sped up thing, I could see more people doing it and outside of people trying to avoid it just for novelty's sake. There's a lot of other benefits we're, we're going to get into, but... Um, or things to discuss, but what it, what were your thoughts on it when you first heard about it? Yeah, man, I thought it was a, a good uh, cultural eye because we've seen instances of, of of this come up before that I don't feel like artists really capitalize on. I think back to um, like the City of Angels TikTok remix that had came out, right? Like mm-hmm. I always thought at the time when Twenty Four Get Golden embraced that, I always thought it was a great look because it was like this shit already out here, yeah, it's moving whether you take credit for it or not, like why not align yourself with the right? So I always thought it was like a genius move on his part. Mm-hmm. Um, there was like the whole drill version of XYZ song trend that is really just starting to kind of die down, but was like really big early, earlier this year, maybe like late last year. And so it's like every now and again, like fans will do something that impacts the way that other fans want to listen to music. Like it starts as just a, an idea and shit hit. And the next thing you know, the rest of the internet loves it. They're making these versions of these songs anyway. The artist is getting no real benefit from it because they or their team is choosing not to find a way to cap on it. So right. seeing her do that, I was like, oh, that's smart. Like, they're going to do this shit anyway. We might as well find a way to attach ourselves to it. I'm assuming that. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go look it up um, after this, but I'm going to see if they sped up the songs to maybe match the tempo of the, the songs that were originally going viral on TikTok. Because I think that would be interesting because that might kind of mm. flip their whole like um, content ID algorithm, maybe make that shit start coming up. Something I don't know. It's me speculating. But I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I, I think I think that would make sense, right? That right there is actually that's a very good point. Yeah, because that goes back to the conversation of ownership, anyway. Right. So you actually we'll get to that. But the first you got ownership, like you said, we own this song. Period. Right. Mm-hmm. And the content ID, all of those have definitely been slipping through. Yeah, hundred percent. As a matter of fact, the, the campaign y'all are talking about today. This morning or whatever, we didn't know. Was that sped up or not? No, they. Definitely, no, it is sped up. Yeah. It is sped up, yeah, right? Sped up, yeah. So, got a client, very big artist. Hey, we can't, <laughs> we can't have uh, really even stand on this song. Hard for us to find it on TikTok. Hard for us to do a brand deals like we need to, just because we can't track this thing. Yeah. All right. This the content ID, which I wasn't thinking about that part till you said it. Yeah, that is a very simple way to then go ahead and trace every single thing that's been happening. So I I can't imagine that they did they did not do that. Like so, it's, and, and they might even not care too much for the fan listenership aspect of it. Of course, we're gonna ma- market it like that. Yeah. That's the that's what we do. We market it. Oh, for the fans, we love. Like, we know y'all love our music. Sped up, da da da. But really, we like. Hey, bro, we need to make sure we got this shit on lock. Get all the <laughs> money that's related for it. Like you know the PR. So yeah. that that's a great point. Then the other side though, which I heard Joe Budden bring up was the ownership of the project from an artist label standpoint. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't know, you know, because of summer situation, I don't quite know. So I don't I don't want to speculate on hers, but just generally speaking, is that the same as Taylor Swift re-recording her shit, right? And how that was outside those bounds and now she owns it because she re-recorded yeah. and it's not the original master. And I know that was after I think a certain time range. Like the speeding up changed something in terms of the ownership. I'm not sure actually, because I don't know how significant like the alteration has to be mm-hmm. for it to count as that. I honestly don't know that. That's a that's a good point though, because I would think my first thought is no. Like I feel like label like man, we, we threw this shit in Pro Tools, sped it up and export. That's what the label was gonna say. But we talking about court. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know the the artists right and their team cares about what court says. The label yeah. you know, like is always gonna say no. Nah, this is under this is under us. Like yeah. Taylor, like hey, it, what would I think originally? Right, you, well, Taylor just re-recording, bro. You just said the same lyrics. It's the same song. It's the same artist. I don't understand. Hey, 
Legal. Like, no, I added a different breath on on, <laughs> on uh, minute one thirty. Like it's a little different. <laughs> I was a different person at that time. <laughs> that's old Taylor. So, like legally, you know, that's not our expertise, and we didn't take the time to look at the contracts or whatever. But somebody yeah. who's out there, if y'all are listening and y'all really know this, hey, please DM me, Brand Man Sean, or y'all know how to get to Corey too. Whatever, hit up one of us and yeah, break it down for me. Break it down. <laughs> Hey, maybe we have you on and have a whole conversation about those nuances and rights and stuff. Cause I'm always curious, you know what I mean? Yeah. To to hear some of that stuff. I know, you know, I know enough to be, you know, competent, yeah. but that's not my side of the game. So I don't know enough to finesse anybody right yeah. just yet. Yeah, yeah. That'd be that'd be an interesting power move though. I yeah, I'm gonna I'm look into that. Yeah, here. Ain't for sure. Here. But but she wasn't the first person I saw do it. That was an artist I talked to earlier this year. Um this rapper from, I think he's from Chicago. His name is Hey Sonny. And I remember at the time we had our, our consult, our consultation call, like he was having the same issue. Well, he had fixed the issue because his song went viral on TikTok as a sped up version. And then he was like, well, I'm just going to drop the sped up version on my Spotify, which I was like, genius, very smart mm-hmm. move. You know, proud of you for doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was just having that issue of like, how do I tie it back to my song? And I think that was before... Because, you know, now TikTok has a feature where if there's a song in the content, he catches it, the song, the original song will pop up underneath it. So I think he was having his moment before they released that feature. So now he might be cool. People are probably finding it and translating over right, to right, it. Right. No base off of that. But at the time it was happening or had, ha- had happened, that was a big, a big concern for him. So, yeah, like I said, I think moving forward, it, it's one of those things where it's like, bro, if you see your fans like doing something, like take advantage of it. Because like there is... I don't understand how you as a music artist could wake up one day and see this wild version of your song created. Shit got millions of views on it. And your first thought isn't, let me release this shit under me. Let me let me get this shit fixed now. So it, it yes. counts a, 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 a credit towards me. I don't get how you don't wake up thinking that. It's I not, get how culture wasn't like that before. Yeah. But today, yes, why not? Because it's so easy for you to do it. Yeah. Right? You don't have to press any CDs and all. Literally, you just speed it up release it officially bam the cost is low the marketing doesn't really even have to be done like that because it's out there like that yeah. already and you're still not trying to do an official rollout so it's not even about oh now i have to p- do a regular push behind mm-hmm. it it's like just like you said put it under my umbrella so when they go they can get everything from this one-stop shop that's me mm-hmm. right? oh a visualizer cool right all these little things that you can lean into or that they're na- they're nationally leaning into Go ahead and do it. Right. Plenty of speed the music video up. Speed the Hey, <laughs> I haven't seen that one happen yet, right? I haven't seen right? that either, bro. And go ahead and get that first, right? Because I don't know. You you said she wasn't the first to do it in terms of releasing her music, but the important caveat is oh, album. Album, yeah. right? Yeah. And see, this is the thing, man. This is the marketing <laughs> shit, man. It's I'm going to just change the frame of it so I can say I'm first, mm-hmm. right? First single? Okay, bet I'm going to do the first album, mm-hmm. right? Someone might try to do first EP. Hey, that's a stretch when someone already did an album I can't it's hard to find somebody caring right but first music video yeah. right just those small little things is just a way for you to get extra attention right that's what we're always fighting for a little bit of excuse to create conversation anything that you can talk about period yeah, bro. And, but if I was an artist yeah, you remember when Lil Nas X released uh, Old Town Road and he dropped like 15 different versions of it you yes. remember that but if I was an artist today at least that was culturally savvy or culturally aware. And I've seen specific, specific types of music <laughs> <laughs> popping off, right? And I'm gonna just use, let's use the sped up version as an example. Let's use the the drill version of it as an example. And I can't think, let's just say, I don't know, like a, an Afro beats version of it. Let's yeah. just say those are the three types of music that are online, like culturally popping. If I release a song, I feel like I would naturally release a version of that. Like, yo, I got this song coming out that I think is gonna be big or I wanna push a lot. Yo. Producer, can you make a drill version of this? Yo, engineer, can you speed this up and give me a, a sped up version? Yo, Afrobeats producer, can you flip this into an Afro version? Right, just like just to be able to hit those different pockets because now you control the funnel of all that attention around this stuff that fans were probably gonna do anyway. You know what I'm saying? And be able to funnel it back to you. The only one you really can't do it with is like when they do mashups. Like mashups, you get to kind of let the internet yeah. you know, go where it goes. But if there's a part of that process that I could control and get ahead of artistically. I would do it because I can't imagine that it would be. I mean, I guess other than like 
you know, the ones that are complete flips by different producers, that's a whole another agreement and, and, and stuff like that. But right. it has a, a really high chance of being worth it. It has a really high chance of taking your song into demographics that the original might not have gotten into. And it's all going to benefit this thing that you're trying to push anyway. Like, I feel like that should be like a natural part of the rollout. Like, let me go look at the music cultural landscape, see what social media is doing. Are they like this type of shit right now? Okay, I'm going to go make a version of that around this. Or make a version of my song that fits into that and then let them do their thing with it. Yeah, it's like letting the audience be a part of your production. Mm -hmm. All right. We've let, we've let audiences be a part of our marketing and determine what we're going to push out A&R yeah. in that regard. But a lot of people have not yet gotten gotten comfortable enough to let them be a part of producing the song itself. Yeah. And I think largely that also goes back to the artistic vision. And right. wanted to be your thing. Right. It's yeah. like, ah, ah, that's not what I decided to put out there, right? The ego related to that, which I get. I do get, right? You have your vision, what you want to push out to the world, but this is going to happen anyway, right? If someone's doing it and it's working, people are responding well to it, then do it. That doesn't mean this, this is what you have to market heavy. I stress that. Can't, can't stress that enough. You can still push your main version heavy and heavy, but since this stuff is happening anyway, mm -hmm. you might as well get the streaming revenue. You might as well get the rights and control and everything else that comes with it. That's that's all we're saying. Now, you know, there's, there might be some unique opportunities where it does make sense to truly like a triple down on yeah. whatever the new version that comes, if it makes sense creatively. But at the least, all we're saying is, yeah, just put it under your umbrella, get the money and other benefits that comes with that. Yeah. Now, yeah. other side of that, you got to talk about hyper pop. Oh, uh, yeah. That's because the whole thing. this is just trying. <laughs> this is what this is, right? Yeah. The culture has been trained today, right? It's not like this is anything new at all, like sped up music, right? We got Kanye samples. Right, speeding shit up and that shit sounding amazing, speeding up the old school tracks. You reference uh, so the, like, the old Alvin and the Chipmunk yeah. albums that our grandparents were listening to. <laughs> right, right, and that that stuff sounds crazy yeah. to me. But that's something like, bro, y'all can't, y'all can't talk about us, man. Like the stuff that y'all, so y'all had some wild <laughs> experimental stuff. Even you know how they're talking about. Like, oh man, y'all wearing tight pants because you know they complain about the heavy, the, the baggy pants, then they complain about the tight pants. Yeah. And then, you know, some of the older folks just like, oh man, you know, that's feminine. I just say, <laughs> hey, Unc, what was Lionel Richie wearing, bruh? What the hell was Rick James, all the earth went and fire? What would you <laughs> look at them outfits, dog? Like, you can't talk about tight pants and talk about those outfits, bro. Yeah, bro. I made Prince a global superstar, bro. Hey, facts. <laughs> facts, right? So, like, come on, man. It's, it's an even playing field. Everybody got their, you know, creative expression, and, and, and I get it. <laughs> I get it rubbing y'all the wrong way or being interesting, but no, you can't tell me y'all wilding because. Y'all were wearing leotards out there. <laughs> Y'all can't tell me like the, that uh, tight pants don't look better than leotards. Is it above the knee shorts? Oh, man. The OG Hoochie Daddy shorts? Hey, the OG Hoochie Daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but back to the point, right? So hyper part is obviously in that same category. It's something that's been around in terms of musical technique forever. Just like T-Pain with that effect had been around mm -hmm. With uh, not OJ the Juice Man, but uh, OJ Juice Man, I forgot buddy's name, but Orange Juice Jones, I had a song using that, I believe, but um, <laughs> that's a crazy name. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and if it's not him, he has a song that's hilarious that I I had to talk about one day. That song is a meme song. <laughs> um, but hyper pop today like set the tone and culture that reintroduced that sound. Right, yeah. like you got complete artists that make all their music damn near in that mm -hmm. and now it's like oh well if you speed up a regular song it's almost like i can i don't if i'm a a, a fan and i only like stuff in the hyper pop style i can literally go out in the world and make anything hyper pop mm -hmm. that's all that's basically what you're doing no different than chopping screw is slowing shit down right yeah it's like well i can just speed shit up Right? Of course, you don't have all the unique production techniques, but for lack, lack of better um, example, that's all you're doing. So that, again, means this isn't nothing, anything special in that 
regard either. Right. We already seen hyper pop become more organized. I don't want to say commercialized. It's not on that level yet. Right. Mm -hmm. But hey, again, you take advantage as a pop artist and somebody who already has traction. Whenever something like this happens within culture, you have the ability to take culture that's already happening and be the first to show up on a higher platform yeah. and get clout from it. Yeah. Yeah. That should be a part of your marketing at all times. It's like seeing what type of what part of culture you that makes sense for you to introduce on a large scale. Yeah, and it, it makes it make sense too why the whole sped up thing is such a TikTok heavy thing. I, I thought about when you brought the hyper pop thing. Another genre of music that influenced it too is the Jersey Club music. Like Jersey Club music has a lot of those, a lot yes. of like sped up samples. Yeah. Jersey Club music and hyper pop music are yes. both really popular on TikTok. So 100%. it's like all these kids who get that music or just people in general who get that music from TikTok. It's like you're already trained to at least be okay with the sped up voices. Like even if you don't like that music, like you're, it's not weird to you at this point, mm. right? And so now when other artists do it, it's just like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I've been listening to Jaleel. I've been listening to Eric D.O.A. You know what I'm saying? I've been listening to all these artists that do this shit on the regular. Like this is nothing compared yep. to that. So it's just, I, uh, you're right. Like it literally has been like, I will argue that hyper pop probably started on TikTok. I think Jersey Club music probably carried it. I could be wrong in that, but just from me watching what songs pop when, like there was a whole like Sugar Crush song that was killing it like 2019, 2020, whatever. Like, right. To me, that was the first time I'd ever yeah. heard that like currently, you know what I'm saying? I can see that. Um, but yeah, Hyper Pop and Jersey Club definitely, definitely brought that shit up. And now it's just like, bro, and it's such an easy finesse to do. It's like, you just, hey, engineer, speed this shit up. You know what I'm saying? Send me these separate files. Got a whole nother project, whole nother single to drop, whole nother asset to push and market. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah, nah, like, that, that right there is, um, I don't know, man. It's just like culture's happening in all, so many different pockets. Mm -hmm. And then it's all about like culture making an impact is usually when things happen in multiple pockets yeah. and then someone finds a way to bridge it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll actually, I want to, I feel like more of this is going to happen. So we're going to save some more on that combo another day. But the big thing, the big thing for today. That article you sent me over. This one right here. Oh my girl, Lord. 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 She shared. <laughs> Lord shares concert industry explainer. Touring has become a demented struggle to break even or face debt. That's a that's a serious word right there. Demented. Yeah. We're talking strong language. And we want to break this down, but I think the best way to do it here is literally just word for word, read what Lord said, and then talk the talk that we need about it from there. Are you gonna do her voice? Am I gonna do her voice? Yeah. I don't got I don't got that one okay. in me, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not have that one in me. Hold up, man. It's not doing a scroll like I want it to. How come it's not scrolling with with, with me? All right, hold up. We, we might have to do a. 10 second edit out. I want to make sure that they can read this on the screen when I do it. All right. So if we scroll down to the note that Lord has left, you said she sent this out on an email, right? To her fans. Yeah, the newsletter. Yeah. Newsletter. All right. She says, basically for artists, promoters, and crews, things are at an almost unprecedented level of difficulty. It's a storm of factors. Let's start with three years worth of shows happening in one. This is a reference to the pandemic and it has been crazy. I cannot, cannot disagree with that. Every event that I had been going to before the pandemic, when I went to it, like the first one after this year, crazy tripled in audience yeah. at least yeah. ridiculous and that's not even just music by the way like almost any event right uh one music fest was crazy invest fest was crazy concert a lot of concerts i went to so add let me see let's start with three years worth of shows happening in one add global economic downturn and then add the totally understandable wariness of concert goers around health risk all right on the logistical side though there's things like immense crew shortages. Here's an article from something in New Zealand. We can skip that. Extremely overbuilt trucks and tour buses and venues, inflated flight accommodation costs, ongoing general COVID costs, and truly mind-boggling freight costs. To freight and stage across the world, wait, to freight a stage across the world can cost up to three times the pre-pandemic price right now. 
I don't know shit about money, but I don't know enough to understand that. <laughs> but I do know enough to understand that no industry has profit margins that high. I'm going to agree with you. You don't know much about money because <laughs> their prices, they don't have that high profit margin. Their prices have, in, have increased too. That's why it's so high for, for them. But this whole pocket right here is, is why everything costs so much. This is what she's referencing. So the fans, like y'all are paying what y'all are paying, right? But at the same time, extremely overbooked trucks right which means those people are hard to get a hang of mm -hmm. which means the prices of them have also increased because they can be far more selective with their work you got to pay for this covet cost and safety measures that you didn't have to pay for before right mm -hmm. which probably not only was it not fully accounted for because this is a new thing yeah. right so it's harder to account for it but it's not as efficient as well which means it's at the costlier side of the curve Five years from now, COVID safety measures will probably be a lot cheaper because it's been done. You know, people have made it efficient, the, the plastic or whatever, you know, it goes into it. Just like it took a while for co at home COVID tests, right? Yeah. I was in a Walgreens the other day and now it's just right there. You can buy it. But before the government had to ship it. Yeah. So it's that type of thing. Call things are costing more money. All right. This is what the artists are dealing with on the same side. Let's skip forward. Ticket price would have to increase to start accommodating even a little of this, but absolutely no one wants to charge their harried and extremely compassionate and flexible audience any more fucking money. Nearly every tour has been besieged with cancellations, postponements and promises and letdowns and audience have shown such understanding and such faith that between that and the post COVID wariness about getting out there at all, scaring people away by charging the true cost ain't an option. All we want to do is play for you. So what is she saying right here? Bruh, our costs have gone up significantly, but we can't charge the fans <laughs> no more money, which means our mar margins have shrank crazy. We're making way less money for the same shit, yeah. right? Because, hey, who are fans? You know any fans that are going to pay three times the cost after we just went through the pandemic? Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's a tough, that's a little tough cookie to be in a rock and a hard place. Yeah, bro. I mean- and with that part, like, I always respect artists for not wanting to charge their fans more. But I feel like as fans, bro, we're smart enough to understand that, like, sometimes it just it, – it is what it is, right? Like, if you, if you have an artist you care about and you like enough, it might shrink the amount of people that fuck with you because of that. But, like, we going to get it. You know what I'm saying? But, but bro, I think you're missing a point, though. <sighs> you can respect the artist for not wanting to charge, but I think the reality is they can't charge more. Like think it's a cap on what they can charge? Yeah. It's a cap to anything. Like an industry cap? No. Uh realistic. Oh, like a, what uh, like a consumer pay cap. cap, yeah. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like that's why I said it, it probably would like let's say I don't know how much her tickets were. Let's let's say her tickets were three hundred dollars. Okay. Know. Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Right? And let's say she bumped it to five. Okay. So three hundred, maybe she sells twenty thousand tickets. At five, maybe she sells fourteen thousand. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's like I well, I, I'll do the math in my head real quick. I might have actually just proved your point <laughs> doing that math that way or breaking it down. But I don't know, man. I feel like the people that that like you enough are going to be okay with it. And I mean, to me, it makes me also think about the Taylor Swift conversation a little bit. I know we keep going back to her, but I'm pretty sure an artist of her size is probably having the same issues, right? Because yeah. all the things that Lord mentioned being a part of the expense. Is that, that's that, that's 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 rich artist problem. Like, come on, bro. Like, the average artist ain't don't even. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't even think about the cost of ship a stage. Set bro, the flyer stage yeah. across the world. Yeah. I did. I'm like, dang, bro. You didn't just like get a local stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, but Tyler did a really good job of pushing everything back to violent merch sale, right? So it's, she probably is taking her touring and just lumping it in with her marketing costs. Like, okay, it's gonna cost me. I don't know, a million dollars to put this tour together. I'm only going to make about 800K. I'm down 200K on that aspect of it. But if I get all these people to buy vinyls, buy merch, buy a t-shirt, talk about me stream, then my upside on everything else jumps up 100% or something. And I'm good now. You know what I'm saying? She alludes to that a little bit, right? Yeah. Later on in this. But I think there's multiple factors for artists and why they can't just up the prices. Mm. Because 
we can get deeper into this as we like finish it out. But all right, yes, we know in in product sales, there is an effect where you can up the price, have less customers, and sometimes make more money. Mm. Not not a, let alone just the same, right? So that's a real thing, right? So she might have those people who love her so much and they can come across the money that still go. Yeah. But one artist have this brand impression that they have to be able to uphold, right? Yeah. Certain fan, like people don't want to look like it's a money grab. Why am I paying this much to go to your concert? And we're dealing with inflation on top of that, right? Which is also a, another thing, um, compressing profits. So then you have a brand like Lord. The Royals? Yeah. You the girl that make Royals? Yeah. We don't mess with the Royals, but we gonna, we gonna charge <laughs> this check <laughs> from the peasants? Like, come on, man. Like, which I always thought that shit was slick. It was like she was becoming a Royal by with a song that yeah. was going against Royals, but you know, whatever. I'm like, all right. <laughs> it's a finesse. Y'all are being finessed. Um, <laughs> but like, you can only, you can only go up but so much because people, it's, good, it's just bad PR. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I think that's what it comes down to. It's bad PR. And should you stop your show? Should you just not go on tour at all? Or should you just make it more intimate? There's there's some arguments on multiple sides, right? And But I think as an artist, there's a good argument on why you would want to break even and go ahead and do it anyway. But let me finish this before we get there. Because she has a lot of a lot of stuff that she's revealing out of here. Number one, let's start in the second paragraph. Profits being down across the board is fine for an artist like me. I'm lucky, but for pretty much every artist selling less tickets than I am, touring has become a demented struggle to break even or face debt. For some, touring is completely out of the question, even if they were to sell the whole thing out. Even if you sell it out, touring is out of the question. You can't do it. The math ain't mathing. Well, that wasn't her words. The math doesn't make sense, <laughs> right? But the math ain't mathing. Understandably, all of this takes a toll on crews, on promoters, on artists. You'll notice a ton of artists canceling shows, citing mental health concerns in the past year, which go -to. that is go -to. been a huge thing yeah. this year. I, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't think about it till she said that, right? And I really think the stress of this stuff is a factor. We're a collection of the world's most sensitive flowers who also spent the last two years inside. And maybe the task of creating a space where people's pain and grief and jubilation can be held night after night with a razor thin profit margin and dozens of people to pay is feeling like a teeny bit much. All right. So she's saying they're going through it now. Now, let's let's be towards the rest of this. Me personally, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Play on words. Pun intended. God dang, Lord. But I'm straight, though. You know, I was just empathizing with the peasants. <laughs> oh, this is wild. You guys have to come to shows in such a man. And you guys have come to the shows in such mammoth numbers. Dang, she's flexing. Oh, man, she's flexing. We sold out almost 20. Bro, now this shit feels like a troll. I didn't even get to the end when we were when I was reading this before. We sold out almost 20,000 tickets in London. Like, what the hell? And not have having crippling stage fright hanging over me for the first time since such a fucking blessing that you could tell me I had to cycle from a city to city and I'd still be loving it. But I'm not immune to the stress. Just a month ago, I was looking at a show that was pretty undersold and panicking. Only for it to sell... <laughs> Only for it to still sell out the uh, the remaining two thousand tickets in ten days. Wild stuff, <laughs> yo. Oh, bro, this shit just. Oh man, it gets funny. I wanted to put out. I wanted to put all of this stuff in your minds to illustrate that nothing's simple when it comes to the touring at the moment. And if your faves are confusing you with their erratic moves, some of this could be playing a part. That's it. Man, <laughs> golly, man. Oh, man. So you you already called it like earlier. Like I said, I didn't I didn't finish those last lines. It just got crazy and crazy. <laughs> you know, that last lines, how she like turned the tide. But 
you basically summed it up when you're like, man, this is like rich artist problems, the yeah. way she, she spoke of it. Um, dang, man. Uh, early art, the way she words it makes it sound like rich yes. artist. I, I do think it is an issue that every, oh, artist, yes. yeah, every artist is touring is dealing with. Cause I, I got facts, some facts, artists, facts, facts. artists homies touring right now that, like I have one that's on tour that couldn't take his whole team because just taking his DJ and his tour manager put him at break even. Anybody else would put him in the negative. Mm -hmm. And it's like, damn, bro. Like, so he literally took the bare minimum of people I need. My tour manager and my DJ. Everybody yep. else, yeah, I watch this shit for Instagram. <laughs> you know, so. I agree. I, it's, so it's, it's real artist problems. Yeah. And she did allude to it. So it's something we got to get into. All right. It is real artist problems. Yes, the way she said it yeah. was like a rich artist problems, <laughs> you know. Um, so because you, you do have these people who are not, like she said, they're not able to sell what she sold mm. and they don't have the fan base to, she's probably not making anywhere near what she normally will make, but she's taking a lower profit mm. and then you're profiting crazy on the back end from maybe merch and all these additional things. Well, I don't even want to say the back end because merch is, is, is factored into your touring, right? A lot of times, yeah. but she still probably has additional things to continue to upsell and make money for where you have a lot of artists that yeah, touring is not an option. And that was your way to build your fan base, right? You're in that that phase of your career where you should be touring as much as possible to add and connect with your fans. So then you can go on that next stage where, hey, I've made a song that's and got enough awareness for it, well, or maybe a project, a set of songs that's got enough awareness for me to do a small tour, connect with people personally, and then I could come back and hit a bigger lick with my music. And now not only can it do well from our marketing, but we have these real people in the world that we've connected with all over that, you know, um, can that they can make a deeper connection with me and support me on a whole other level. Right. That's that phase. And it's like, how do I make that phase happen? If shit, the big artists are suffering, we've now squeezed everything we can out of it. So I haven't seen as many artists. I haven't seen as many of the smaller artists take advantage of, of touring like that. Wow. Just, just because, yeah, right? Yeah. And I remember Troy Carter said this. I was on this Zoom. This is probably March, not March. Let's just say in the first half of the year, like the pandemic, had, we had only been in a pandemic and like lockdown for maybe a month or two. Mm. And we did a Zoom chat and, you know, everybody was like, oh, man, the industry is going to be lo locked down for another month or another month or three months. Right. But people were thinking it was going to be good by the end of the year. Yeah. Like a lot of people are still trying to spread that noise. I wasn't believing it, yeah. but it got validated when um, Troy Carter, he was it was on this call. It was so funny because YG had got on. I, I think I yeah, sent you that, yeah, right? Yeah, and he was having yeah. like hood <laughs> dude problems, like using Zoom for the first time, trying yeah, to figure it out. Yeah. Watching YG try to get up, make Zoom work was hilarious, man. <laughs> um, man, I fuck with YG. But he, <laughs> Troy Carter was talking about how Live Nation was, um, he had talked to some people and basically he was like, yeah, touring, it's not going to be back till like 2022. Mm. And, you know, this is 2020. Yeah. So it's basically just like not a chance. So don't even think about it. And then even alluding to like big artists will be the first ones to return because mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of times the opportunities for the smaller artists are through bigger artists anyway. Like yeah. I'm, I'm touring everything set up around the bigger artists in the industry. And then the rest of the touring kind of funnels through that. So that's a part of it. Yeah. So if you're not one of those, you really have to finesse to, to make this happen. All right. And we see this in any kind of marketplace when shit goes down. Right. You have the top of the top and the bottom of the bottom survive. What do I mean by that? Like if you look at clothing, because bottom of the bottom sounds bad. Not exactly what I mean, but look at clothing or a provider for something. Let's just say apparel. So you can go all the way to the bottom and look at a low cost provider and look at somebody like Walmart the bottom of the bottom or city trends or something. And then you got in the middle, <laughs> right? These other providers. And then you go to Louis Vuitton, mm. and Gucci and up and up from there. Those people survive because they're the highest profit, right? Or highest cost for a specific audience. And then you have the low cost audience, but the middle class 
it's always a part that gets squeezed out, whether it's middle class jobs or middle class companies, because they aren't hard enough in a niche. You, you can't charge more because your customer base doesn't have that type of money and you don't have the brand to validate charging more. And you can't charge less because your operation ain't set up yeah. to be able to handle charging less. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the issue that artists are basically figuring out right now. It's like, damn, us middle class artists are the ones that are suffering and us who are trying to become middle class artists are suffering. But you know, the artist who's still just in his bedroom, <laughs> like yeah. trying to make shit shake, he ain't worry about tour problems. Yeah. Right. And like Lord said, my empathy, my, my, <laughs> you know, my emotions are suffering, but from a profit standpoint and a sustainability standpoint for my fan base, I'm good. Yeah. Right. I'm going to be able to weather this storm. So that's really what we're seeing here. Just, the, the sheer economics of of it and it's kind of why it's like it's always scary to be middle class bro you got to figure out how to like get to one side or the other whether we got the financial side of it in terms of huge fan base and small fan base right yeah. then you have the middle class as well where it comes to branding within a niche right so I always reference Playboy Cardi because he's like just easy bro and it's it's a very clear what that fan base looks like um and he's like the top of it right mm. that that niche right he's one of those guys now you can start adding yeet there and all that right who are coming in that same space those people are going to be good right but that niche is going to go away in some years right it, there's always the copycats yeah right those copycats a lot of them won't be around yeah. But the ones who made it to that top and were that or, or the people are going to be good. The people who are trying to play around. And I'm just going to do this kind of sound because it's popular, but never really committing to anything and building a specific fan base. They're going to find trouble. All right. And that same thing goes into. Let me try to think of it. We thought we saw this in a, a SoundCloud space. All right. Now, there was a lot of SoundCloud artists. There's only a few at the top of that specific niche. A lot yeah. of people don't necessarily look at it. You know, a lot of SoundCloud rap, quote unquote, didn't make it to full blown commercial. But as long as you were the king of that specific moment, right, or that specific culture, you'll always be good. Yeah. Because as you know, people aren't involved in that part of the culture as much over the years, 10 years from now, whenever they want to dip back, they're just going to dip back to the top. They're not going to dip back for the most part to like find a new person that they barely heard and didn't yeah. connect with. You know, you want your nostalgia at that point. So like that's, that's what um this torn reminds me of. Like, again, just the economics of it. And it relates to so much of what artists are going through, but like bringing it back to l lower again, though, because I feel like we got, some more there, there's so many other points that we can bring out of this is there something what were your first thoughts especially on the second half because we kind of talked about the, the first half like when she got into how much tickets she sold um just the problems that are going on the crew promoters did you have any thoughts yourself i mean my my first thought was i mean she's right like i said i i, I talked to clients got artist friends on tour citing a lot of the same issues yeah Second thing I thought was like, man, this is a also a genre specific out, uh, issue. I think you know, mm. going back to it, it's like, I don't know. Let's compare like rap to pop, right? Like pop concerts, you expect a much higher production value than you would necessarily for even a rapper of the same size. Sometimes, right? Like, like yeah. if I were going to see, I don't know, Lil Baby versus Taylor Swift, I'm expecting Taylor Swift concert to be the more the more yeah. cinematic in terms right. of production value, right? Yeah. Like Lil Baby can get away with some lasers, maybe some smoke, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> nice outfit on and like, you know, yeah. we good. Taylor Swift gonna have the costume, it's gonna be, I don't know, dancers right. and all this. Like not shit, shipping right? the stage out. Yeah, shipping the stage out, like all this, <laughs> like this whole stuff. So I also think part of it is a, is a genre specific um, issue. Yeah. Rappers and rap in general tends to be the most lean of, of all the music genres. R&B, pop, anything that needs some musicality elements to it tends to be the most, you know, most expensive aspect. Like I mentioned with my friend, my friend only had to take his DJ and his tour manager. If he was, you know, an artist that needed a full band or some shit like that, I don't know what he would have did. You know, right. I don't know how he would have made it work, but it worked out because of the, the, the genre and type of music that he made. So that was the second thing I thought I was like, man, this is this is a pop artist problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least at the level she's talking about it. Right. Third thing I thought about is like. 
the the way she expressed the message made me feel like it was more of like a like a ploy to get fans to buy tickets to the shows coming up. Let's talk about it. Because uh like I mentioned earlier, this was a newsletter sent out to her fans, so mm-hmm. email only newsletter. So this message is really only being spread to people like you and me because we, we see on the publications. I'm assuming somebody in the publication got word of it. And so it's not like she made like this big deal about it, like she's trying to like change the industry or like rally everybody together to find a solution. We've ran enough email phones before. Why well, know like you know, most email phones you have an email that specifically is meant to appeal to emotion. Yeah. <laughs> like almost every savvy email marketer is like, yo, that shit needs to be in there somewhere. Tug at their heartstrings, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what did, and what did this email prep for? One, like you said, empathizing with her for sales, right? It's like, man, you know she really struggling and she needs this because yeah. it's tough on her. Maybe not as much as everybody, right? But it's tough on her. And I think that's part of what the save face of, hey, I'm doing good though, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I wasn't begging y'all. I made you empathize, but yeah. then I flipped it and was like, ah, oh, but I'm good though. I'm good. You know, don't worry about me. <laughs> don't worry about me. It's, you ask your girl what's wrong. Oh, no, I'm good, Shawty. Nah, come on. You, <laughs> you already know. So they playing that trick. But on the other side, what if something goes wrong? You also are preparing them yeah. for that too. Yeah. Prepping you for if I decide to cancel any of these tour dates. Mm-hmm. About it. Like, oh, I get it. You know, she's probably not selling a lot of tickets and she's going through. Mental health stuff, which is all valid reasons, but yeah, like you said, like now I'm, I'm, I'm it's not shocking now. I don't feel caught off guard by it because it's like I'm a fan. I got this letter. Deep down, you know, it's a possibility. Every time I read shit like that from artists, I'm like, oh shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, <laughs> like, they gonna do it, bros? It's coming. Like they about to pull the rug out from underneath all of us. <laughs> so that was what made it weird to me. Is I felt like okay, she can't be trying to make it an industry conversation because I felt like a video or something that could have went viral a lot quicker. Would hit harder like article is only going like I've really only seen this talk about like a handful of Instagram pages, all the blogs. She ain't really moving like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, not outside like the industry, right? Industry people are having this conversation, but consumers aren't having this conversation. And then that also made me think like, what do we do to fix it? Are we saying that crews shouldn't be you know uh, desire to be paid more? Are we saying that you know, um, like you were saying earlier, like these tour uh, bus companies that now know, hey, bro, these motherfuckers really want to go on tour. I got all the buses. I can have the leverage here. What person in their right mind wouldn't charge more in that situation? You know what I'm saying? Like, what business wouldn't wouldn't yeah. start to go up on their prices? So that's why I was saying earlier, to me, the only, only maybe it's a couple different solutions. I see either brands are probably going to start being a lot more involved with touring, right? So let's mm-hmm. imagine, you know, Drake and 21 Savage, her loss brought to you by Coke. It's, it's probably going to get to that. Because the music industry is no stranger to just letting brands yeah. put their name on some shit for some money, right? So that, to me, is probably, like, one of the more natural first steps. Second, the funnel is going to have to be optimized for something else. And I think tours are going to start getting looked at more as just a necessary marketing cost, right? Like, the same way, um, like, your ads and your influencers are, it's gonna, bro, your tour isn't maybe necessarily going to be the, the cash machine that it was 5, 10, 15 years ago. Now this is just another marketing cost to put you on the road to push these people to something else that we know we're going to make more money off of. All right, that one right there. As a digital marketer, especially digital first marketer, I I can really, really resonate with a funnel that you might break even with. Maybe even take a little loss. Maybe not trying to, but yeah. you take a small profit or you break even to set people up for upsells, right? Yeah. Get it, do it through and through, day after day. Cool. My problem with that when it comes to music, I don't think they can take that, right? And the reason I say that is many people, most of the industry already look at the music itself as a loss leader, mm-hmm. right? Which means we ain't really making money off of this music. That's our advertising, but we're going to make money from other routes, largely touring. That's why it hurt so much. Yeah. So now you're talking about our plan B yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is now going to be to break even again. Yeah. So I got to take them through two hoops just to get the oop. Now, nah, man, I need the money as fast as possible because production, create creative work, it's already capital intensive, mm-hmm. especially at that scale. So I think that's really tough, man. Like I'm all for, again, yeah, doing that, but it got to figure out a way to 
not not to just break even for sure. Yeah, like, and, yeah not that. And it ties back to a, a couple points we've been making on a couple episodes, bro. Like, Ari's gonna have to start learning how to make money without leaving the house. Yeah, <laughs> facts. Like, you're gonna have to start taking advantage of these different platform credit opportunities, figuring out your digital product setup, figuring out your online experiences, and you know, like you said, one episode. Let's can we bring back live stream concerts? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, let's, let's let's start prepping people for it because. I, I mean, going back to the funnel things, like either, I don't know, either these first few batch of major artists are going to have to, you know, bite the bullet and be a martyr for the cause and just take those massive L's so that maybe the industry two, three, five years from now is, is used to seeing artists mm-hmm. do that type of stuff and funnel it differently, which I don't feel like a lot of them are. You know what I'm saying? Like, who wants to be the, the guinea pig to lose a couple hundred thousand, a couple million to set everybody else up to be okay? You know what I'm saying? Not, not many people in the world like that is willing to, to take that type of an L. Hey, bro, <laughs> Lord Jay Z, little baby, y'all might have to hop in a TikTok creator fund, bro. Yeah, <laughs> boost that shit up. Start doing some influencer <laughs> posts, right? right? Some sponsorships. I got some songs. Uh, our clients would love y'all to post, bro. If y'all wanna, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if y'all wanna do some influencer <laughs> campaigns. And, and it strengthens the argument too that you made about music as a whole being a loss leader. And I do think it's sometimes. Like we, we go back to the credit stuff and we talk about how a lot of times artists don't want to embrace the same monetization opportunities that like influencers and just content creators are taking advantage of, even though they technically fit in the same category. Like y'all are one and the same, y'all are just selling different creative talents. Mm. But like you said, it's like touring was typically seen as the saving grace of it. But could be moving towards where it's not going to be that. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know, man. I just feel like if... I feel like artists are going to have to start just in general looking at themselves more as like creator first, almost maybe not creator first, music artist second, but maybe it'd been like a little bit of a 50 50. Like I should be looking to make just as much money and flip as many opportunities on my credit side of my brand as I'm looking to do on my music side. Because the reality of it is maybe that your music side may never truly be lucrative enough to compensate you the way you want to be compensated. But the doors that opens up for you in other areas does, right? You got a million followers on Instagram because your song went viral. Now you can afford to charge $30,000, $50,000, or maybe more, probably more than that, right, for an influencer post, right? Music may not have been the thing that directly paid you that much money, but it opened up a lot of doors for you to make more money off of other things around it. Like, look at Drake. Like, we we had the conversation on the last pod about, um, you know, Drake being more into flipping brand deals and you know, or we had the conversation about how we don't think bigger artists are as stream focused as like smaller artists are. Like they're not really caring about the revenue because they just need the numbers to flip in the brand deals, right? Drake right. has that that deal with that sports betting company that's probably paying him a shit ton of money. Oh yeah. So he just needs to keep the perception of, hey, I have fans so that way these other entities will give me a lot of money. And I feel like that's how artists as much as they probably don't want it to be that way, right? Like every artist in, in their perfect world everything will be taken care of off of just music. In the perfect world, or not even the perfect world, 10, 20 years ago, because that was the perfect world and almost every music artist had, right? And, yeah. and at least from a money perspective, not uh, yeah, 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 I get you. But the reality of it is like, music is, I think, moving away from that because music is starting to get looked at no differently than just like other forms of content that we consume and your Netflix movies, your YouTube videos, things like that, you're just used to getting for cheap. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, you're, you're just getting it for cheap. And then those companies find other ways to flip the audience into more lucrative opportunities. And I do think music is moving towards that, where it's like, hey, artists five to 10 years from now, you could have a song with, I don't know, let's say a billion streams on it. And a billion streams might not pay the same as it is paying now, or, you know, well, I guess there weren't streams before I mean, now, but. <sighs> Bro, this is why, this is why we have to have that conversation about IP. Mm. Right. Because you basically just made artists akin to Netflix, the movies and all the things like that that are coming out. Yeah. So an artist at best is not just, you know, a creator of music. Them themselves is a true legitimate IP that can be monetized Mm -hmm. again and again in so many different ways. Yeah. Which brings me to did you watch the Riri shit? You didn't. I did Cool. It's all right. <laughs> we're not gonna have time to talk about it here anyway. And the fourth one ain't great. So I'm watching tonight though. I swear. The oh, fourth one. The fourth one. Ain't, you need to. But you need to watch both of them because we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about it Monday or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. 
that one and at least watch three, bro, because four is gonna be like, why, why Sean got me watching this shit, bro? <laughs> why he got me watching this shit? So, but with that being said, though, right? We talk about the squeeze. I just looked this up because I, I was like, you know what? I bet the other side is getting cut through as well. Inflation cuts into merch and vinyl profits, even as sales skyrocket. It's nothing worse when you're making more money and less money at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a conundrum. It, 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 it sucks, man. It sucks. And that's why, you know, Sam talks about the, um, it's like the Zen, the happy, the Zen happiness. Remember, he went to like $40 million of sales a year, mm. but found that he was making less money and he could have figured a problem out there. But he said, no, I'm just going to make six, 10 mil and make the same amount of money for the same amount of effort because oh, top line. So this is what, We've encountered, we've seen this before, right? In ads, well, you know, it's a very similar business model. So I'll, I'll break it down like this. Imagine that your customer acquisition cost is $5 and your product cost $20, right? Great, $15 made per, per sale. And it's like that as long as you spend $100, all right? You spend $100, customer acquisition cost is five dollars which means you got 20 customers mm. right fifteen dollars profit off of each of those right so what's that two hundred three hundred dollars yeah. right yeah three hundred dollars so but next that next hundred customers right all of a sudden your customer acquisition cost shot up to fifteen dollars mm. so now you're only making five dollars per customer you're making more money because you're getting more sales. Like you're making more top line revenue, but it's more expensive. But now you're only getting five dollars per customer, which you customer acquisition costs is fifteen. So dang, you only got four, five, six, really like six customers. Mm -hmm. All right. So you only made thirty dollars on that second. Mm -hmm. You you just made three hundred dollars, right? Yeah, you made three hundred dollars on the next. Hundred dollars though you only made sixty dollars or did I say thirty thirty dollars, right? So that's what artists are experiencing themselves. Hold up, what the fuck? I'll take that. Had to take a quick break. Kept on getting a little phone call, but uh, what I was saying is, um, so that's what artists are experiencing. Is like even if you're getting more and more sales, which feels great, you're making less money mm. per sale. Now you're working harder. Right. Because you have to work harder to get more sales. Let's let's make that clear. Yeah. All right. Like I said, you spent a hundred dollars to make three hundred dollars, but you still had to go put in the effort to spend that second hundred dollars. But you only made thirty dollars yeah. and then you spend more and more money and less and less is made. And next thing you know, you're breaking even. So now I'm getting five times the sales, but I'm not making any money at all. Mm -hmm. That's what people are creeping towards and that's why the frustration is so great it's like dang like i can't work myself out of this hole yeah a lot of times people are like, oh we gotta figure out how to work harder we just grind 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 i'm gonna dug it out if you can't work yourself out of the hole because supplies have increased so much that's a really really frustrating place to be so i do empathize with artists from that standpoint for sure and you know we but we, we're seeing across everything i just saw an article with um about houses costing more all right, especially to get something built, but then the supplies are lower quality, so people are getting houses built, but oh, yeah. more expensive, <laughs> yeah, houses. exactly yeah. more expensive for low quality stuff, and the houses are falling apart. So, imagine that frustration. We're seeing it everywhere, man. And I can <laughs> the stress of I lost money in music, I usually go to touring and merch, those are the two things, yeah. and both of those are now withering away. Where do you go from here? And right now, it seems the option for most artists is just like, just tread water, stay above water as long as possible until this phase goes. Right now, I think the biggest thing is, hey, bro, you got to go hard online. Yeah, It's content, content, and maintain your brand so when the moment opens up, you can cap as much as possible. Yeah, but you got to figure out how to make it through this phase. But you can't stop getting your brand out there, connecting with people online through content in general, private groups, live streams, whatever that looks like for you at your level. That's that's the only solution I see right now. Of course, we can do some math and come back with maybe another one on a future pod. But is there any 
I don't know solution that you see because I did wish he had some type of solution in mind. Yeah, same. I mean, I, I feel like you hit a nail on the head, man. Like, art is going to have to be a lot more digital savvy um, and look at building out the free components of, of or the free components of the top of the phone, pretty much. Like, yeah, you can keep doing these things that pay for these people to come. You know what the solution, solution looks like to get people over to your product for free. You have to start doing it. And then, like I was saying earlier, but I, I really do think, like, long term, that art is going to have to start thinking more like, content creators and influencers um, and just look at, like you were saying, look at themselves as a Netflix, a Disney, a larger brand entity that's more so looking to build a, a, a big IP catalog necessarily more so than a major music career. That's, a, that's really, looks like, I don't think a lot of people are going to like that, going to want to hear that, but that's, that's <laughs> where I see it going, bro. Music today is no different than any other piece of content we consume, yep. not, to, not to the consumer brain. Every yes. other piece of content is relatively inexpensive, bro. I can watch it damn near every movie in the world for nine ninety nine on Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's like if we as consumers are being trained to think that way about creative products, not even about the music industry, just about every other creative industry, it's naturally gonna trickle over to music. Music isn't any exception. You know what I'm saying? Like we want to watch my movies on Netflix, log into Ticketmaster. Damn, they want three hundred dollars for this ticket. Damn, that's crazy. I don't know about that. You know what I'm saying? Like when I could maybe go to another artist I like and see, like, oh man, he's only selling, I don't know, tickets to his online show for eight dollars. Like I wasn't doing nothing tonight anyway. I throw this up on the TV while I'm while I'm you know, eating dinner or some shit, right? Like I think it's gonna move into a lot more of these almost like low ticket, easy to put together offers that artists have to do, rather than like you said, they lean towards more with considered the high ticket, the, t- the concert tickets, the merch, the merch, the bundles, things like mm-hmm. that. Um, and they use that to kind of like make up for it. And get a lot more into just fan nurturing and reselling, right? Like, how many times have we heard just different business cultures talk about how many businesses lose money because they're not focused on their existing customers? They're always looking to bring new people back into the fold. It's like, yeah, right. you, could, you could either go spend that fifteen dollars to bring in a new customer, or you could take that customer that you already spent fifteen dollars on and figure out how to set him, you know, instead of a twenty dollar t shirt, a, a fifty dollar, another fifty dollar product, and another fifty, another fifty, another fifty. So that way, now it becomes it costs you fifteen dollars to get a, a customer that spent two hundred dollars with you, right? And then, and then the margins look a little bit different. So I don't think a lot of artists, a lot of artists don't tend to be fan focused, especially when it comes to monetization. They're usually more like new people. I need new people. I need I need to keep getting bigger. Right? I need more and more pre- more and more people to know about me. When in reality, you could flip it and be like, okay, maybe. I'm not going to spend the money to get more people to know about me. I'm going to spend the money and time to figure out how to get the people that do know about me to spend more money on me. You know what I'm saying? Rather than trying to bring a new person to photo that's only going to buy a $20 t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? That might be where he stops because I haven't laid the groundwork for them to be upselled into things that make them more profitable as a customer. Yeah, man. Like you said. They don't want to hear that though. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're not going to hear that. But I think you know there's some some more solutions we can come with in a future pod as well. Time will tell. Um, like, but I think the movie model is the way to go with, yeah. with that. Yeah, bro. But appreciate Laura for being the martyr that she is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, appreciate you throwing that out there. But next, <laughs> we got to get into our boy. You know who our boy is, right? Our boy. Yeah, our boy, man. One and the one and only. <laughs> 50 Cent. <laughs> I was like, well, Drake? When I was playing. <laughs> hey, man, you you the one who put this out here, man. Uh, I think you might have been the one who, like, actually brought all all three of the clips that we've had. But, like, we're... Wait, I sent this? I think you did. Yeah. No, nah, you know. I think nah, you sent bro, this right now. You sent this, dog. No, nah, I don't know, man. I, I sent it. Yes, bro. I swear you sent it. All right. All right. <laughs> so, maybe we two and one, then. We two and one. <laughs> But 50 has <laughs> three appearances in six episodes, man. So you batting 50%, 50. Oh, shit. Look at that. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but here's this clip. Um, just in our little advice column. Love him or hate him. 50's always entertaining. Yeah, so his I- fame is crazy. That should look aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> right? So let me, let me go ahead and play this real quick. The pandemic overshadowed what the tax plan was hmm. supposed to be, and then I looked up at it and I was like, "What lady that when I when I saw her?" I said, "Fifty-eight percent. What's your fifty-eight percent?" I said, "What? You my partner? All right, let's <laughs> partner now? I don't know. All you give me is Yankee hat. I'm going to Newton." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that said the Eminem show. That is what it says, bro. I don't, I don't quite understand what that means because M definitely wasn't there, but maybe that is a, a, a I don't know. I'm about to look him up. Okay, I was surprised. I have not heard about that, but okay. Yeah, I'm so that did not sound like Eminem laughing in the background. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't. That definitely wasn't. That definitely wasn't, man. But but as always, man, fifty the ever entertaining, but also dropping some some interesting and real stuff. Yeah, bro. And a lot of artists have asked us about taxes and the music marketers is slightly different on each side, right? What you're doing as a marketing agency or record label and what you're doing as an artist. Um, so this was a perfect clip, right? Because tax season's coming up. And it's funny because the pandemic showed a lot when it came to to taxes like we saw a lot of people leave new york a lot of people leave california mm -hmm. right going to these states and what i thought about is you got to be aware who's getting into your money yeah all right and the way i want to position this is the new middleman there's a new middleman who's getting y'all money bro a new middleman that y'all don't see coming but he there and he's slick and it's hard because Middleman on the block. Well, you about to get assassinated. That's why, that's why that's where it start, bro. So we get put on the map. Get put on the target list. Hey, man. All I'm saying <laughs> is this is crazy. We've been like, oh, man. We're cutting out the middleman. The labels, they don't really have as much control anymore. Da, 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 da. One, I think some of that is overblown, right? And it's not as much of the artists fighting and the label's not being able to get control as it is, there's a new way that the label can get their money, yeah. right? And things that they have to adjust to, right? They see it coming anyway. There's They're marketplace change, right? It's always going to yeah, get a bag. Always. But the other part about this is the reason that y'all say y'all don't need the labels is because there's a new middleman. The new middleman is what y'all are saying is empowering y'all, but we can't find a way around it. And that's these tech platforms. Oh, uh, Okay. How much of your money <laughs> does TikTok get when you get a rose? 50%. 50%. 50%. How much do you know when you get a super chat? How much they take? Actually, I don't know. Probably the, about, I would guess around the same. YouTube, bro, got to be about the same. They take 30%. Okay. Okay. Less. Okay. All, All right. right. Yeah. But if somebody gives you that money from an iPhone, it's another 30%. Damn. <laughs> right all right you just <laughs> lost 30 on 30 before you even touch your money and you still got to split that shit with uncle sam bro that makes me think of i had a situation where i had to send my roommate rent and i sent it to him with paypal and by the time the money hit his account <sighs> she was she was no. under she was under by a girl i was like damn oh. it took it took 50 out this shit. i gotta send you another 50. <laughs> <laughs> I just sent you money 10 minutes ago. What do you mean you ain't got enough? Like, what do you mean we short? That hurt because you knew better too, bro. I did know better, but I didn't I, I didn't think about it in the moment. I was like, oh, it's here. It's already set up. Let me go right. send it over to him. Hey. My cash out don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. Come on, bro. <laughs> but this is this is the dilemma that, that artists are now facing. Yeah. Right. And then nobody's thinking about it. Nobody's talking about it yet. But as a content creator, these other platforms that are empowering you are taking from your streams, right? They're there. Now you have more control than you might have with a label or more information than you might have with a label. But your distribution is going to be taxed more and more over time. It's the virus. You know, we plant and then we spread, mm -hmm. all right? We got y'all addicted to us and we up that cost every single year. We make it harder for you to reach your audience so you gotta pay more in ads, right? We make it, we give you ways to reach your audience though that do work, but you tax you for that, mm -hmm. right? So we look at the great opportunities to stream from your room, all right? And make money, get donations. Great opportunity, right? The argument, my argument, right? If I'm the company, because I always like seeing it both sides. It's like, hey, bro, you don't got to pay for gas. You don't go, got to go through the stress yeah. and the headache, right? All these things. You got to fix costs. You really don't have employees. You chose to have employees. We can make money without employees, right? Yeah. There, there's, <laughs> there's sides to it, right? But these costs are right now hitting costs that aren't fully being addressed, partially because there's some artists, well, there's still a lot of artists and creators in general that haven't experienced it yet on a level that they care where they're relying heavily on on that mm -hmm. and then the other side of it is 
I don't think just enough people are taking it seriously yet. Right now, it's not enough people who are trying to say, hey, I'm quitting and going to become a content creator. I think there's enough, actually. But we haven't seen that, like, wave of people going back to work yet yeah. <laughs> or like coming out like hey i really don't got it like y'all think i do we haven't seen enough of that yet for people to realize no nah, this is a another potential dead end in that regard you still gonna have to figure out how to fly before you hit that dead end wall yeah all right so because you got the streaming uh you have anytime you get money through the platform they're gonna they're taking money period yeah, i don't care 100%. sticker stream Badge. subscription, yeah, subscription badge, badge, all, of it. all of it bro all of it and your fans don't know and the crazy part about it, it makes it harder for you to tell your fans to be like no don't give me money this way give it to me that way one because the platform like tiktok is gonna say whoa 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 man quit telling people to do that cash app thing yeah all right youtube isn't as bad with that but tiktok like nah dog like y'all 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 gotta do it this way and it's inconvenient for them and that's the thing yep inconvenient right <laughs> and we know higher friction means less conversion yeah period all right it's like oh okay i'll donate next time then or when i'm like at home yeah, my cash up is down i got you, you later. know like that type of thing so you got to take the money anyway and let that let that transaction occur because it still deepens the relationship even though you made less money than you wanted to yeah and then try to lead people to these additional routes so there's a middleman coming and, you know, we've been demonizing the labels for the past 15, 20 years. The creators at some point are going to turn on this new savior and look at him as a new middleman. Yeah, bro. It's going to take the revolt of all the, the OG TikTokers. There's been, you know, tens of millions, 20s of millions, maybe like yeah. some of them in the hundreds of millions. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, it's going to take one of them come out and go like, man, this TikTok shit. Don't pay what you think. I remember when the credit fund first started, and there was a lot of creditors posting their um, payouts from them hitting like multi million streams, and that started a conversation. And then that shit died down because, like you said, we're looking at like, okay, well, I don't get a million of views on my videos anyway, so shit ain't gonna affect me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Regular consumers are like, I'm not even a creditor. You know what I'm saying? I never plan to join the credit <laughs> fund, so I don't care that you made forty dollars yeah. for a, a million views or whatever. I, I don't remember the guy's video, but it was something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. like, it, was, it was some low shit. And so, yeah, man, like sometimes I understand because like with TikTok, it's like they're look, probably looking at like, yo, we gi we give you this audience so fast. Hell yeah, we taking 50 percent. bro. ain't no way, bro. You think I'm about to put you in front of a billion people overnight yo. and I'm not taking none of that? Come on now. YouTube, yeah. that's probably why that price is lower because like, yeah, we're giving you the access to the audience, but it's a lot harder to grow on YouTube. I would be pissed if I had to, we had to work as hard. We worked on YouTube, but I'm going to take 50 percent of a super chat. Like, come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you, yeah. that, that was me that did that, right? You didn't give me. I had to. I grinded this audience, but you yeah. didn't give me that shit. So sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't get it. But yeah, bro, I give it another three years. Three years. Yeah, another three. Because like I said, there's not enough people at the level yet for it to, it to trickle down. Mm -hmm. like at least another. I think at least another three years. Yeah, and you still have these increasing costs. Mm -hmm. What does it cost for your your merch? More. Are you going to give them a lower quality shirt for the same amount of money? Right? An NFT shirt. This is how taxes work, right? It's like when taxes happen, the government taxes, somebody's going to feel it. That's yeah. the problem when people are always like, these people should get paid less money or these taxes should lower. Or these, It's going to be pushed somewhere. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh man, we taxing food more money. Either the price of it, the money, uh, the, the bread is going to go up or the business is just going to eat that cost. Yeah. All right? How many businesses are trying to eat that cost? Yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> like, we're not trying to eat those costs. So, bro, you don't right? need bread anyway, man. You know? Hey, bro, got to <laughs> have it. Got to have it. Like, think, as an artist, are you really trying to eat these yeah. costs? So it's the game that you're constantly playing, and it's a part of it. But it's going to be interesting, especially as artists, right? You still are going to have maybe the manager that you have to share a uh, percentage with, and those percentages have stayed fixed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's like... You're not gonna see managers saying, "Oh yeah, I want to take two percent instead of ten percent." You oh, know yeah, what I mean? Because the rest of your costs are going up. If anything, it might go up too, but it's gonna at least stay fixed. So you got the same fixed cost with new added variable cost, mm -hmm. right? Or increased variable cost. That's never a good mix, right? So, hey, artist, look, there's a new middleman in town, and you know we all got to answer to him in some way. <laughs> But, but, we answer the hours every Tuesday and Thursday. Hey. 
<laughs> tune in. <laughs> <laughs> so like, hey man, like you just got to figure out how to navigate that because then you're also going to still have your three percent that you're paying a payment processor on Stripe or PayPal or whoever. whoever Every one, like, bro. Your payment processor. Hey. <laughs> Always, you're never gonna avoid that one. Oh, then we're gonna charge never. me to charge money. That shit is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, unless you're just gonna have everybody cash app you, and you know that's you know there's a reason we're gonna do that. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that's such a business model, bro. Yeah, we're gonna charge people to charge money. That's just wild, bro. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> 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 but hey, those are just the initial thoughts on that. I think it's something we'll cover, and we should keep getting. We can. We should get into more um, over time. But to end this out, do we have time to address one more topic, just for fun? Twenty One Savage calling out his XXL classmates. We got time for that. I think so. We got time I've been, for that. I've been holding this in. You been holding it in? Yeah, oh, man. Oh, man. Because it, I got to oh, pull up that cover, no, bro. Oh, no. We're about to pull it up. We're going to put bro. it right on the screen. Because I think, yeah, we we got to go person to person, pound for pound. Yeah, bro. That was what, 2016? XX, XXL was freshman? Was it? I think it was 2016. Yeah, 2016? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Yep. Oh, yeah. There he is. There he is. I ain't even seen that 21 in a while. All right, bro. Let's look at it. Let's Extend it, boom, put it in the center a little bit on the screen. They got some people cut out. Come on now. Why they got the top cut off? Let's see if I can make this. All right, let's find an image on uh, Google. Google, yep. <laughs> let's see that real fast. Images, bam, bam. All right, cool. So let's open it up with the image. Oh, I'm on the wrong side of things. All right, there we go. Cool. So, mm. who do we have? We want we want to go down just person to person, <laughs> or or do you want to just start with some general thoughts? You're basically asking me, do I want to individually shit uh, on these rappers? Which I would say to that, I am personally not against it because there are. A handful of people on this cover that do I don't think stand a chance. Hey, Anderson Pat is a different genre. That's a hard one. I think we could address him last. Okay, Yachty, I'm sorry, bro. Like y- y- y'all know me, bro. I've, I've been, I've been, I've been taught my Yachtyism for a long time. I'm a solid I'm, fan, bro. It's another mark against you, bro. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I love him enough to, to let him know when he he's up against a different beast. To be honest with him, yeah, it's like, bro, I, don't walk on that battlefield, please. You'll die. Hey, that's that's, that's real loyalty. Come, exactly, that's, bro. That's real loyalty right there. Lil Dicky, no, sorry, not happening. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all, Lil Dicky. Designer, out of here. Respect no. for you, what you did, but now, nah. okay, no. designer. And I do want to preface it by saying, like, every artist on this cover, I do like as a music artist. This is literally one of the strongest yeah. covers, if not the strongest yeah, ever. of all time for XXL. For like, sure. literally every artist on this list is still successful. XXL, who, who's that? In, is in that John? Form, that's is that? Dave East. Yeah, every artist on this list is still I successful. Yeah. I don't see any, any fails Fo- yeah, follows, on this yeah, cover. Yeah. No, so no. Everyone on here, bro. I would probably say Dave East. And this is without like understanding pocket watching and understanding all you're doing. So, you know, look, take it as you as it is, right? Davies is probably no, actually, I take that back. Designer is probably the least successful on this cover. In terms of Okay. Mm. In terms of lasting cultural moves because Dave East has made the pivots in terms into um, acting and things like that. You know, he's been in one of those things where he was never as hot as any of these artists. Right? Yeah. Like he's probably the least hot out of all of these over time. But he navig has navigated well and made the right moves. He's only I would say he's only increased his value. Maybe not fully within music. Okay. But as an <laughs> overall brand, I think he's doing well as a brand. I think okay, we we already said we started with all these people yeah. we're considering yeah. successful. Right? <laughs> all these people we consider successful in, in, in some way still. Yeah. But I think yeah, I think designer would be the low for me. Yeah. Just from what I understand on the front front end. You know, it's not even like a personal opinion. It's just the shit that I've seen and am aware of. Yeah, he don't have enough. Because remember, too, the criteria for a versus. Versus of what, like an hour? He got like... Oh, yeah. okay. So we're going back to music strictly. Yeah, we're, now we're out of the success. So 
Are we just talking music straight up? Yeah, yeah. I was Catalog. talking. Yeah. The only the only per people on here I think is seriously compete with Twenty One Savage in the verses is Uzi and Kodak Black. Because they have mm-hmm. like Love Denzel Curry, he don't have enough big hits, so I think it would have to be a very, very specific crowd. Right. A Denzel. specific crowd. And I wouldn't even say say him with a specific crowd just because of yeah, I would say G Herbo with a specific crowd might have a fighting chance, a fighting chance, a puncher's chance. Yeah, like he gonna get some hits off, yeah. but he he going down eventually. Very specific. Well, it's 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 no different than the to me. It's no different than the Gucci Mane Jeezy. Mm, I don't know, man. I don't. Hold on. <laughs> let me say no different. Let me not say no different. Right? What I mean? Let me explain. <laughs> Uh, this is my WAP take of the. Of the yeah, well, got, <laughs> this is my WAP, my WAP equivalent <laughs> take, right? Nah, nah, nah. What I'm saying is, Jeezy had more commercial success than Gucci musically, okay, particularly in that era. Yeah, okay, right, okay. But you hear Gucci versus Jeezy in Atlanta, you can very you could come out of that versus and feel like Gucci won. Without a doubt, right? Especially when you add all the cultural stuff that happened, you know, the mm. smoking on, like all that shit, um, like you know that whole beef and the way he was kind of disrespectful. That, that you know, people felt okay. Like that's a side thing, but I'm just talking about musically. Musically, you could come out of that and feel like Gucci won, but understanding the limitations where everybody in the nation don't like know all his music, like Atlanta knows his music. Yeah, people feel like Jeezy won. Right, yeah, so yeah. maybe if you go to his hood, I feel like G Herbo does that. It's harder to find that in some of these other fan bases, but I feel like G Herbo might have that in his, yeah, that's, in his that's, hood. That's, that's fair. What I'm that's fair. But that that's that's such a specific yes situation. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Like, agreed. The, the 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 Fahrenheit has to be right that day. The moon has to be <laughs> in the right place. You know, we we know it has to be a crescent moon. I get it, bro. But all I'm saying, he might have a puncher's chance, right? But I agree, Kodak. Yeah, Uzi, bro. Uzi. The only two that got a serious the Anderson an- as well. But Anderson, I know it's a different you know, it is, bro. Know. <laughs> it's weird that he's on here the way he is now. I understand yeah. at that time why he was on there because he was rapping a lot more in that mm-hmm. and doing that using that part of his um toolbox. But hey man, he's on here. 21 Savage said everybody on here, bro. We gotta go with everybody. We can't just put him aside. But that's what I'm saying, bro. Like that would have to be it would have to be the right room for Anderson Pack to win. If yeah. if, if Twenty One right. Savage, if it was mainly Anderson Pack type of people, yeah, bro. If it was anybody else, what I'm talking about Twenty One Savage's core audience, little white kids, anybody else, bro, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, <laughs> old white kids <laughs> or old white people, Anderson Pack all day, give it to them. <laughs> but they're not going to the verses, bro. All right, old black people. And it's a pack all day. And then, but With 21. That Bruno stuff, he gonna get off? Come on now. <laughs> 21 Savage got Post Malone fans behind him. He got Drake fans behind him now. So we can't talk about Bruno, bro? <laughs> you, you, we, do, we doing that? We, we don't talk <laughs> about Bruno? No, nah, bro. I like Bruno Mars, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying, bro, like that. It's, it's, well, we can't be like, oh, you don't count the features and stuff. But Bruno uh, Mars ain't Post Malone and Drake. Wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Bruno isn't on Post Malone and Drake's level. I think I'm going to stand by that. I'm like, let's look, <laughs> let's start let's let's start with monthly listeners. You know that's the go to numbers argument. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm standing by that. <laughs> All right, Drake, I can get just from longevity. Like he's a different beast. I put him in a different category. He's at 51 million monthly listeners. Oh shit, I might, I might have to take it back, bro. I'm shit, telling I'm, you, I'm gonna look at my the boy. world is bigger than us, my guy. So, so post Malone like like two hundred thousand behind him. Two hundred k, but hey, see what you talking Bruno about. Bruno Mars been around longer. So, that's why Drake been around longer. That's part of why I didn't <laughs> put Drake in um in Bruno's category. I mean Bruno and Drake category, but like if we want to be realistic, shoot, Drake got sixty six. Okay, see now we talking about different air. <laughs> see, you can say he not. What did I say? He ain't Drake. I'll give you Drake, but but post. And then we know weekend is above that. So all right, we ain't gonna get into that. Yeah, right. So Bruno, 
Bruno's him, bro. That's all I'm saying. Bro, you no, I don't I agree with that. you, man. Like and nobody in the chat, bro. Don't, don't that ain't what I was saying. Yeah. I I'm I know, bro, but I'm saying like it's like it's like going into a fight with one superhero on your side versus two or three of them on your side. Like, yeah, you maybe You're talking you, about the features. Yeah. Okay. But just the things you you're, you're attached to. I'll give you the, that. The people you've been able to, to siphon from, right? I'll give you that. <laughs> siphon. <laughs> and so it's like, I don't, like I said, bro, the only two people I think could seriously compete, and that it would even be fair to put it together, would be him and Uzi or him and Kodak because yeah, that's true, the right. audience mash up the, the audience that would know about all of them so it would be a very fair fight you know what I'm saying like, yes. like everybody here knows about the other two versus like like I said if it was Anderson Pack fans could maybe make a case I don't know who 21 Savage is probably not but maybe right or let's actually say if it was 21 and Lil Dicky Lil Dicky fans would probably make a case they don't know who 21 Savage is 21 right. Savage fans could probably oh. definitely make a case that they don't know who Lil Dicky is right Kodak Black Uzi 21 Savage in the same room, all their audience would know who the other one is. It would truly, truly be a battle of the hits and not who do I like the most. So. Hmm. All right, realistically, because again, you know, I'm, look, I was just playing the game. He said everybody. <laughs> so he had to at least consider and make an argument for Anderson. We know he's a different animal coming from a different space. But realistically it's what you said right yeah 21 uzi and um dang kodak yeah who do you got uh i ain't a lot man it's hard because i'm such a big fan of all three i'm looking at their catalogs now bro because uzi play xo to a life the building shutting down well easy but, but kodak black play uh what's the shit called um Damn, bro, why flocking? Or yeah, but no flocking. Easy or... no, no, but you got a lot. They they all have a lot, bro. Yeah. Like the Atlanta in me is gonna say twenty one savage. God always root for the home team. It, my, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put Uzi last. Mm, last? Yes. Crazy. Crazy. I know somebody gotta be last, but I just I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, know how, I don't know how fast you threw it out there. <laughs> I was doing the math, bro. I'm like, I think, because now we're working from the 20. That's what I'm doing. We're not just talking about the success of the artist, so we're working with the concept of 20. And I think, I personally think Kodak and 21 have more on that level mm -hmm. than Uzi. Because, you know, Uzi had the whole thing where he just went a period. You know, he had to go dark because the industry shit. Right, so that took away from it. Not saying he couldn't have had more, but yeah. you know, he had he didn't have as many that hit on that level. Now, I could be wrong. Hey, y'all make the argument. Twenty one. This is off the top, by the way. So, uh, I think twenty one. I don't think he has as many as as high as Kodak. Right. Let's just say if we made like maybe a top five or something. Like I think maybe his top five might be stronger than. Um, then 21's top five but I'm pretty certain without looking at the discography I think 21 would get him in, tw in 20 in 20 because the argument that people are making against 21 Savage is that his biggest songs are mainly featured he's featured on or has features on whereas like the other artists I have like really large solo hits so we're going straight with the we're going to go with the solos main I mean, I think that's a strong argument against Twenty One. I can't, it you, is, can't bro. you can't lie about that one for sure. That's true, man. He got bank account. You know what I'm saying? He got. Uh, let me look at the catalog, bro. Let's see what was on I am. I was a lot. Oh no, I had J Cole on there. Yeah, mind. I about to say yeah, no, no. Like his biggest ones are definitely yeah. he just, That's but this is also why I also say in Twenty, I think he he ekes it out. Yeah, but. I don't think his top is his biggest ones aren't as big as Kodak. I don't think that's just off, off the top though. Let me I mean, let, let's pull it up. And none of them are fucking with uh, XO Tour Life. Oh yeah, that yeah. by itself, yeah. for sure. You, the numbers definitely speak for that one alone. Let's see. Let's just pull up. You know, just do a quick. We're not gonna go on this forever because we know that there's, you know, there's emotions that gets involved as well. But let's just look at the top five from Drowning, ZZ. Silent Hill, Super Gremlin, and Walk. Those are Kodak's top five mm -hmm. on Spotify. And, then and he could technically also do Bow That Yellow because that literally should do songs that like you wrote or had some part in technically. You know, technically. Yeah. See, but we're just going to go off of the Spotify top five yeah, okay. just for simplicity. 
<laughs> just for simplicity, because we have, I mean, 100%, we know it's some shit that oh, can yeah, be. Bro, I'm tripping. I'm still looking on my phone. Oh, right. man. I forgot this Drake. See, that? this is new stuff from that new project. That that complicates his top five, because none of those have actually, like, hit yet. Not that say that people aren't playing them, but, you know, it hasn't been enough time for culture to, like, truly, like, crown them. Uh, that, that messes me up. I don't hear it. What was on with Savage Mode 2? No, nah, Heroes World Cakes. I don't know, bro. 21 Savage, because of how much he collabs with other artists, bro, he got so much shit out there. Yeah, he does. And in verses they can Dang. use, they can use things that were featured on. <sighs> All right, so I'm a, I'm a, I'll say this then with 21, since we can't just use the, the Spotify top like I wanted to. Um, The thing about 21 that he can say, yeah, <laughs> Features, 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 features. Yes, he has hella features. But damn it, his features be some of those artists' best shit. Yeah, facts. Like, for real. Facts, Whatever bro. bag he gets them in, they like to borrow the bag. They borrow 21's bag. It's usually not him going to them, right? It's yeah. them using some of his powers, his aura, so they can get in that bag. This this project, I'm still not um, done with the Drake 21 project, Crazy. by the way. I keep wanting to finish it, but then I keep starting over from the beginning every time. That's my favorite project of Drake's in the last three projects, probably. Like, just from like the first three or four songs. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's resonating with me and where I'm at in my life. You know, sometimes you listen to stuff in different lights, but that's the first one that when it came out, it hit me enough and where I am that I feel that shit and, yeah. and it's the movie. I'm with it. All right? So, that that's how, that's how I feel about that. Then you got the the lot. Right, mm -hmm. we know that with um with J Cole, Two Chains, some when he dropped that last project, the uh, the basketball what was it called Straight to the League, something like that, something like that, something right? Like rapper to the league, something rapper yeah. to the league, or yeah, yeah, whatever, right? We know we talk about the same thing. That twenty his twenty one tracks were some of the best tracks on there. Yeah, like uh, so twenty one elevates. Yeah. The, the music. You can't just act like twenty one is just copping somebody else's shit, bro. Yeah, bro, he like he like salt, man. You know you you. You go into it looking at salt, not expecting much. Hey, you bro. put salt on some food, that shit becomes amazing. You oh, know what I'm saying? Exactly, bro. All, <laughs> all 21 of them herbs and spices, bro, that he be putting on that shit, bro, be making it taste just perfect, man. And there's a lot, bro, because on that list, I think he's probably the, the better feature artist. Like, And there's a yes. lot, like like you said, bro, Like everyone is always looking for who is going to help put them in the best situation. Yes. And so if I had to pick between those three artists, I'm like, man, who is comfortably going to do a good enough feature job that I'm in a great situation? I probably would go 21 Easy. easy. Yeah, easy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Easy. It's like, because he's proven that he has a good track record of doing that. And we all know, bro, like, if you become that artist that everybody fucks with because they know when they put you on that shit, like, they gonna go. That's a great position to be in. You know what I'm saying? And then you also can make your own quality solo music, mm -hmm. which he does. Great position to be in. You know what I'm saying? Right. Amazing position to be in. And they've done a great job with that without him T-painting himself. Yes. That's that's fair. I think it's he's he became more of a personality faster than T-Pain did. I agree with that, and yeah. I think the sound isn't as specific as yeah. and and you know as novel as when Teeny Pain yeah. came out. But you know they also didn't get exploited as quickly. Well, they hopped on yeah. T Pain. Well, they were everybody was going for it, bro. Yeah. So in that short period period of time, so there's been factors. But I think for whatever way, way and whatever reason, right? I'm not even here to break down why that may or may not happen. Point is. He's been a go-to feature person like T-Pain was in that period of time, and the impact is, has has lasted more. Maybe T-Pain had more, as much as 21 had in a short period of time, whatever. Yeah. But, like, he's not, his brand is only elevating, which we, you know, for many factors, T-Pain took a, took a toll for a second, right? And many of them were unjustified, but, but boy, yeah. With the, 21 is my one of my favorite, favorite, favorite brand stories. Yeah. Over the last decade, him and him, two chains. I'm sure there's a couple other, but those two, like just the way they navigate, level of strategy, difficulty, and how they move. Not just oh, I'm the biggest artist in the world, not pop like I'm like Cardi B did out of nowhere. Like not one of those. Like they really mm -hmm. navigated their way to where they are. <sighs> yeah, twenty one and two chains are two of my favorites. Yeah, he's real life. I think we gotta do an episode about that one. They like because uh, I would put twenty one savage in the conversation of best rebrands, one of the best rebrands ever, bro. Like, you know, if I would have told you ten years ago, five, let's not even say ten because he went around ten years ago. Let's say five years ago, 
that one day 21 Savage is going to be giving you financial advice. <laughs> yeah. You have laughed at me. I mean, I might have asked about what specifically. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just because, yeah, you know, because of the brand. Yeah, because of the brand. Are we talking about work in the street? Are we talking about how to move, right? Oh, but, I, I, but I always would have thought it would have been good the way he presented himself. Yeah, that's true. Because he's always, whenever he interview, you could tell Brush Sharp, he just didn't have the experience maybe in some of the categories he's yeah, right now. Yeah, right? Like he, even going into the whole financial literacy um, brand that he's in, like, it was a very interesting flick. I don't know if you remember, he started by doing the yeah, whole yeah. stop wearing jewelry thing. And yeah. that was like, why oh, I'm being smart about my money? It's like okay, so Twenty One Savage knows something, right? Like he's been listening to some, some, some Stephen Graham or something. I don't know, man. <laughs> somebody got him, somebody got him right, and then yeah. he elevated from there. Got the cash up thing, but he, he, I think he has one of the most interesting rebrands in music artist history of all time because it's, it's 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 so far left field from what you're used to seeing artists in his his demographic use that brand for. Mm-hmm. That it's like it's shocking, but in a really good way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna bring up some of the other moments of his rebound because, like you said, that could be a whole episode. That's a whole episode. But what I will say is, what's your top three out of this? Like, give me the ranking. So we gotta end it. <laughs> you gonna force you into a ranking? Uzi. Oh damn it! All 21. right, um, damn. All right, top three. Twenty one, Kodak and Uzi. So you agree? Look at that! Yeah. Look at that, man! You could have just said it when I said it, man. I call that Uzi. See, it's Cause that, that's, hard. that hurt, bro. Honestly, <laughs> in a perfect world, if I wanted to say what I wanted to say, it would end in a tie, and we all of us as fans hey, go home world happy. Ain't perfect. <laughs> <laughs> all of us as fans go home happy, <laughs> and I bump all that music on the way home. Oh man! And I don't have to deal with the sting from any of my favorite artists being taken down <laughs> like that. <laughs> Hey man, well, well, with that we are gonna end it. Y'all stay tuned every Tuesday and Thursday. No labels necessary. Appreciate y'all for listening this far. Cause if you listen this far, hey, it's all love. Y'all are real fam and giving us the views and streams to let us know it's worth continuing to keep this thing going. Give us mm-hmm. the feedback. We we appreciate everything y'all have told us thus far. I am Sean. And I'm Corey, and we're out. Peace. Peace.